Fuckers, how you doing? Where you been? You doing good? Welcome to another episode of Guys We Fucked. It's the anti slut mean podcast. I'm Corinne Fisher. I'm Christina Hutchinson. Welcome to the show. If you want to email us, it's sorry about last night's show at gmail.com. Today's subject line is in quotes, not just a pretty face, she's also a great engineer. Very secondary. <laughs> Hi, Corinne and Christina. I've been listening for years and years and love your show. I think I've graduated from being a dumb bitch. Well, we never do, but that's okay. I'm 30 years old, but the story took place in 2017, three years into working my first job out of college. I was working as a mechanical engineer for a company that makes shipping containers and modified containers. The company is very much an old boys club when it comes to executives. It's a manufacturing facility with an office and a shop area where projects are built. I was assigned to a very unique project, which was a sort of remote controlled hydro- hydraulic straddle carrier. Ooh, sounds like a f- sexy thing. One day I was in the shop testing something on the machine that day we had customers come and visit and they were touring the shop with the vp of sales as they came around to shop of the shop to my project where i was testing or measuring something the vp of sales asked me to give a short demo of the project so i showed a couple of the controls and how it moved it was a short interaction but on their way out the vp said to the customers not only is she pretty but she's a great engineer too he said it two times. I'm so glad I spent four years and a hundred thousand dollars to be introduced to a government customer like not just a pretty face. I couldn't stop thinking about it. I kept hearing an echo in my head. That evening I posted what happened on Facebook. Not my feelings about it, just what happened. The my exact words were not only is she pretty, but she's a great engineer too. One of the salesmen uh, as he introduces me to a customer. So that was the post. I wasn't exactly sure how to feel about it. I told my mom about it and she thought I should let it go. Quite a few of my Facebook friends are also female engineers and I also had a handful of people from work as my friends. The Facebook feedback encouraged me to go to HR, which was something I was considering already. The next morning, I took a few minutes to review the handbook and I went to HR and explained what happened. I explained that he said it twice loudly in front of customers. Later that day, the VP of sales asked me to come into his office where he gave me a pretty weak apology Mm. he cited that our difference in generation is why he is accustomed to talking like this all right yeah that's fine but like fix it because i'm younger than his daughter etc since i basically reread the whole handbook that morning i remember this section that states you also can't treat someone like your child you're the only person who's ever read the handbook the person who wrote the handbook (laughs) didn't read the handbook my love (laughs) which is annoying uh, HR sent me a letter, uh, sent me an email later and asked me if the VP had apologized. I responded that yes, he had, but maybe he needs a refresher on the policy since his apology also broke the handbook rules. Oh a few weeks later, things the got... The handbook. Oh, God. <laughs> but it's like, why are you going to... Why are you going to make a handbook? Well, no one's... Because only dorks are going to read it and they know that. This is very hall monitor energy. Of yeah. course, he shouldn't have said that to you, but okay, we'll, we'll go on. A few <laughs> weeks later, things got worse. During a company-wide quarterly... Of course they did. Anytime you go to HR, they get worse. That's the fucking irony of yeah. HR. <laughs> During That's why we don't have HR here. Guys, we fucked. Yeah. During a company-wide quarterly update meeting where they update the sales stats and big, um, and big projects, etc., the company's owner's wife uh, brought up the handbook. For a moment, I felt satisfied that we would all get a refresher on the policies. As if a woman is going to be on your side who's married. (laughs) (laughs) And then she continues to say, nope. She spent one minute on the handbook, then says that if you have a problem with someone, go to HR about it. Then spends five plus minutes talking about how to post the experience on social media, quote, because we don't want people thinking this is a bad place to work. So passive aggressive. End quote. I was close with some people in my office and they knew right away that this was about me. Mostly because she kept looking at my face. (laughs) Right after the meeting, I checked the handbook to see if I had violated a social media policy. Girl. Girl. was not put put down the handbook. Put down the handbook. <laughs> You're gonna have yeah, to put yeah. down the handbook. <laughs> I think we know by now at this point in the email the handbook ain't doing shit. 
this company made it clear that they would not protect me. They would not stand up for me. They wouldn't enforce the policies that made me feel safe and valued. It made me scared, scared that if something worse happened, they would fight against me. I mean, I think you're correct. I was fired. A few, you're correct. I was fired a few months later because my performance declined since it's hard to care about work when you know the company doesn't care about you. So fuck uh, them. The company's name is I'm not saying that uh, in the name just because uh, Chad, Chad yeah, Kins is going to. Yeah, because we're going to get in trouble. Despite for it. what they tell you, it is a bad place to work. I'll just say it's a New Jersey. Uh, I'm sure they could have I could have handled the situation better, but I was young and it was my first real job. I can't thank you ladies enough for how much you've taught me about being a woman in society. Maybe one day I'll write it, uh, about it, how I learned the hard way not to fuck your coworkers. Thanks. Was and that in the handbook? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it, it's it's a, we all, we we always pick up pick up the handbook when someone else is in the wrong, but when we're in the wrong, do them do we then pick up the handbook? I do. I always I do hear from from friends lately uh, about like be, just not being valued in your job. And how do you? That's not a woman thing. Oh no, yeah, welcome to life. Yeah, no, for My sure, God. for sure. No, men and women I'm, have told me that. Yeah, I'm responding to this the, to this right. person. Yeah, but like, what do you what you know? Ha- <laughs> How do you mentally just go, I guess I'm not going to care about being valued in my job. Like, I guess you just, you have to force yourself not to care. I mean, you get a new job and then you, for a little bit, you feel valued wherever you are. <laughs> Cause you're the then, new person. Yeah. And you have you're hope. the flashy new person. You feel like the new company is different than the old company. Right. And then two years they tell in, you it's going to be right. The two years in you go in for your evaluation. You don't get the raise that you want and you have the same feeling that you had in, at the old job. Well, I mean, right. the key is, new job. If, if they don't value you, you, you just don't work that hard. I mean, like, and, I, I don't think you need a sense of, like, I, I, a lot of people need to feel valued in so many other places in their life because they don't feel valued within their own body. And, like, that's just something I come across time and time again. Mm-hmm. I've never once been like, I need to thank you. I don't think I'm valued at work. I don't give a shit. <laughs> I don't give a shit. I assume I care, my coworkers don't care if I live or die. And mm-hmm. that's just, like, I've always been that way and it didn't bother me in the least right. I come in I do my work for me and I leave mm-hmm. right 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 and right. at the end of the day if you're if I feel like if you're at a place I mean like and it depends it's like you know because most time like if you're working for like the man like that's not your like <clears throat> that's not your passion that's not what you're trying to do with your life anyway yeah. so like to me the issue is not like that you don't feel valued at a corporation of course you don't they barely value their own fucking families right and you so, know yeah. you have you have to to me the issue is you have to you know find a, a place place of work or career that you that you love and are passionate about uh r- regardless of whether your co-workers value or you're not i mean the easier said than done for sure Michael, um, michael's raising or, or if not you find it in another place in your life well not in the corporation world and the other thing that i was corporate world to add to it she had mentioned in that email about uh you know understanding that the company is not going to have her back whatever like very brief story about another media company that i worked with that name, was name, female name, led. Names. you could figure it out oh, yeah, we, we know listened. we know <laughs> No, we heard about this all the time. So, uh, so that company, um, the uh, the HR representative for the company was actually the CEO's uh, sister. In- oh, that's not good. Yeah. So there was that's one- a conflict of interest. There was one- I would go to HR for that. Yeah. yeah. Well, right. But that's the thing. Who do you- who watches the Watchmen? Like, right. who do you go to to talk to about that? So there was one day they brought in the company lawyer to talk to us about something that had been going on. <laughs> And the the ess- essence of the meeting was for this the woman who was talking to us to say, like, you can come to me about, like, all these different problems that might be having or whatever. And it was everybody that worked there. And collectively, we're all like, all right, well, we think this is a big problem, that this HR person is literally part of the family of somebody who works, who, like, owns the company. And it was this realization, the... Um, at this meeting that the company and HR, HR is there to represent the company and their best interest. It is not there to protect you. Um, because if it had, if... Yeah, if, it's to stop them from getting sued. Right, exactly. Yes. So in these inappropriate so, situations... That's why you never feel, go to HR. Right. Yes. There's no point. Uh-huh. Right, like putting, I agree. A, putting it on record, it doesn't really mean anything. Like maybe if you get fired or you leave, you can attempt to try to sue them after the fact because there's a record mm-hmm. of inappropriate behavior. If it's something really yeah. bad, 
you go you you file an actual right. like police report and then if it's something that's just only bad within the context of the workplace i mean my advice to this woman is she made a common mistake that i see a lot of young women make that get real wrapped up and jazzed up in feminism and listen i fucking love feminism but i'm like a little bit more of a again a, you know a I'm realist. the malcolm x of feminism not the martin luther king i'm not doing a march i'm gonna fucking shank you um <laughs> not malcolm x was not shanking people um but like uh you, you know just like you I, I think like you did all the the right steps that you're supposed to, but these are steps if you're thinking about it to the next level set up by the like corporation, which is then uh, just a, a a piece of the patriarchy. So it's like really like you're just yeah. you're just kind of doing exactly what the man wanted you to do, and like it's not that's not going to work. The easiest way to nip that interaction in the bud, which I think escalated so far out of proportion, and now unfortunately another female engineer doesn't work at this company, uh, you know, because of this small interaction. Like, and I'm not saying that you should have just like let this roll off your shoulder but like you you hand, you gotta handle these things in the moment and i know yeah, it's very yeah, yeah, hard yeah. and people don't think it's of it. important though and but everyone gets learn. nervous we gotta learn but like literally if, if i know exactly what i would say if that guy said that to me i would have been like thanks toots i would have said that to him immediately <laughs> and it and he would he he would have been like gotten it uh? yeah. and then and then we would have had a Hopefully. fine interaction and i've done that to so many like bookers in comedy and stuff yeah yeah um, that's a good response and you just like you just gotta nip it in the mud in the butt immediately because they know like if you, you gotta be able to handle your own shit i know it's hard you know um and uh you know going to hr making getting a f apology that means something because they were forced to do it None, all, it's not gonna happen the, of course they're gonna be mad at you of course they're gonna talk to the wife about you of course they're not gonna like the facebook you know update because you're a problem now Ex exactly exactly no one wants a problem no one mm -hmm. you know it, it's just that's the way you handle it and and it's also a way that you that you're able to get your you know respect back i also feel like the amount that that bothered you was a, a little much um so to me there's something else going on there like do you not feel adequate and you're I just like it should, i don't think it should have bothered you like bothered you for days the way it did um because if you're in like these boys clubs like and i and you know we're members of a boys club too so i'm yeah. not speaking about something i don't know about i'm continuously in boys clubs like i just we, laugh we get told we're pretty funny for i don't, don't usually think women are funny but that still happens to yeah this day. And men of and women. course like it becomes a series of microaggressions so I, yeah. I, I i guess but it's like also it's just like i just laugh at these fucking losers they wish also i mean i know this happens more to women but i think that if you're attractive older people just do this to you all yeah the time. yeah i, yeah. I mean I, I got this a lot when pro like primarily from like 19 to my early 20s when i was working like retail like and older stuff like women that. older women yes. yeah 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 100 literally almost the exact same comment and you're just it, is, it doesn't make you feel great but like I, there was no shortage of it from women of a certain mm. age especially living in the tri-state area <laughs> and it sucks but yeah. then it's like would you rather be ugly right because that's a lot more of a hassle <laughs> right 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 you 100%. know percent. Uh, yeah, you know it's just like there's so many problems in the world it's like uh, I, I just don't know I, I just feel like this escalated very far beyond what happened and and you didn't need, need to lose your job over this and like to, to to like that passing comment for for that to then come down to somehow the company doesn't care about you it's like well number one you should have known that already right. like <laughs> it's a company it, of course they don't care it's about a dog you. eat dog world out there guys yeah and I know you were like 27 at the time so I'll chalk it up to that. <laughs> uh, but also like, you know, he did say, he didn't say, look at this hot piece of ass. Right, right. He said she's pretty and also engineer. Demeaning? Absolutely. Patronizing? Yes. Inappropriate for the workplace? Also, 100%. yes. I agree with you on all these things, but like, you know, he did say you were good. <laughs> right. I just don't know. It's like, it's just like, no one's ever going to speak to you in the exact way that you want to be spoken to. Fans, yeah. fans of this podcast don't speak to me. I, I was g g complaining about so, uh, how people come up to me all the time and say shit to me that I don't think is uh, warranted. That, that is supposed to be nice from people that supposedly like me, you know? So it's like, we, we just don't know. Yeah. You gotta it, handle it, yourself. It, yeah. It's, 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 it, I think it was just, a lot of hullabaloo about nothing. <laughs> there's just a lot. There's a lot of 
bad things happening and I just don't know that I feel like you should still work there yeah 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 <laughs> I gotta yeah. be honest uh come see us live and hear us in other places um I have a patreon.com slash Christina Hutchinson where for five dollars a month you can do group zoom therapy in quotes Chad because I'm not a licensed therapist um three to four times a month and it's really lovely and wonderful and we cover a lot of ground and I gotta say I'm pretty good at facilitating group therapy in quotes Chad um and then I uh release episodes of my solo podcast the voice in our heads uh, at least once a month on patreon.com slash Christina Hutchinson. Uh, and you can listen to my other podcast without a country. We just did a midterm election special live. Mike Cuscarelli was part of yep. it. I mean, obviously, you know what happened with the midterm election. So, you, uh, you know, but it is on YouTube. It was a fun episode. Um, and then we release episodes every Saturday. Again, just to subscribe to the YouTube because you're going to be on YouTube anyway, because you're going to be subscribing to the guys we fuck channel. So then go over and subscribe to the without a country channel. Again, little free things that do so much. I mean, especially if you're not a luminary subscriber. Come on, Come guys. On, yeah. you we need something. We need something from you, please. Rate, rate, and rate, <laughs> review, and follow Guys We Fucked on the Apple Podcast app because that's awesome. And it keeps us in the top 200 comedy charts because literally everyone and their mom and their dad and their brother and their uncle and their cousin have a podcast. So, and we're really proud of what we're putting out there. We're 500 plus episodes in and uh, still delivering a good product. So, follow us, rate us, review us, and also uh, all of our social media at Guys We Fucked without the U and fucked. So come on down. And then I'm at Philanthropy Gal on TikTok, on Twitter, which is, I mean, going to hell in a handbasket right before our very eyes sure and, um, and Instagram. And I'm at Christina Hutch. Dude, everyone has a blue check mark now. It's insane. And you have to tap on it to see if it's like a real blue check mark the way we have or like a fake uh, paid for blue check mark. Yeah. It's, in, it's crazy. Well, it's bananas. You have, you have companies that are tweeting it. Did you see the insulin company that tweeted out that insulin was going to be free? <laughs> But it wasn't I saw the insulin company. Somebody made a fake Coca Cola, like yes. Coca Cola Rio, and like if this gets 100 retweets, we'll put cocaine back in Coca Cola. Yeah, it's just pure fucking chaos out there. It is. Elon That's just made it a, a pay for play. It, yeah. su it sucks to like earn a blue check mark, and then especially when you're like good at Twitter, uh, and then just all these fucks are just paying for it. But it also just it, it fucks up the stream of information because yeah, at, weirdly in a weird way we go to Twitter because there is a yeah. verification. Twitter system. has become it's a real news source. Yeah. I mean, Yes. It's a utility. New York Times, Washington right. Post, they all they all include tweets in their articles very regularly. Yeah, right. Yes, so they do. So now you could just take your Instagram Fuck. account, rename it New York Times with two S's, yep. and put the picture <laughs> up and tweet whatever you want. Yep. Yeah. And people are gonna be have to like it's gonna take that extra second now to like like vet. Which no one will take. No especially take. someone read the article. Yeah. yeah. Especially someone like us, like where we have a decent amount of followers and we have the blue check mark. It's like, oh, you could really go rogue there with well with, with like renaming it to something else. Like oh. I could just like set up my account as like, you know, I could just call my account caller daddy. Yes. <laughs> yes. And be like, this show sucks. <laughs> Don't listen to us. You're unsubscribe. Right? <laughs> yeah. We are no more than a pretty face. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean it's <laughs> we we could go we could go really rogue. Oh, did you think up. about doing that? No. no. Just now I did. Yeah. yeah. And I, I go, it's kind of brilliant. Yeah, Hi. that's a really funny idea that I just thought of right now on the air. So <laughs> Don't take it guys. It's cringe. Well now I've incriminated myself on right. air, Chad. Right. Right. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't do that, but it, well, for the joke, it actually is really funny. That is pretty funny. Actually, for the funny. joke, I might, because I was like, that's pretty funny. Because I was like, ethics, and then I was like, this is, I was like, that, that they don't have eth ethics on that show. That's yeah. kind of the issue that I have with it. So, actually, <laughs> yeah. I just thought it out in my head. <laughs> Also, and fucking co-host uh, ghosted me, so she's on my shit list. But she's also on the host shit list, so you know, yeah. you get it, you get it. How are you doing, Corinne? Mm, I'm good. I uh, Yay. yeah. Well, number one, such a fun week in New York with the New York Comedy Festival. I was exhausted. I was out to like four in the morning, like so many nights. Uh, a lot of networking, which I do not love. Yeah, um, you don't. But like, good for you. But other than that, I mean, it's like you know, if the agents are gonna fly to me, I yeah. guess I can talk to them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I saw some of my favorite people. Uh, shout out to Lucy at uh, you know from Zany's Nashville, one of my favorite 
favorite people oh. in comedy. And then uh, uh, our agent, Ryan Faraduni was there, mm. who I absolutely adore. So it was like really fun to hang out with them. Um, and uh, we did a wonderful live show at the Midnight Theater. Oh my gosh, excited for you guys to hear that. We saw great art. We saw Mike Birbiglia's new show. I saw Pauly Shore's one man show. Like I had a really good time. And I, cause I really got mad. I was like, I, uh, you know, at previous years, I didn't like take advantage of like going to see these shows. And I yeah. still really like to see a lot of shows. Yeah. Um, so I did that and it was super fun. Um, and I hung out with a lot of friends this week and I saw a lot of people um, exhausted from it. So we won't be doing that again. <laughs> um, <laughs> see you guys in 2023. The ceiling. But it was, yeah, it, it, it was nice. And uh, I don't know. I was also just thinking a lot about like uh, where I am, you know, obviously in preparation for this show. I'm, like, you know, Sunday night, I kind of do a little, you know, uh, assessment, an inventory mm -hmm. of my, of my uh, you know, life and w where it's at. So I have shit to talk about on uh, on this show but also just as a, I think it's good I like to do that on Sundays anyway Sunday to me is like get all your ducks in a row to have a productive and and emotionally uh good yeah, <laughs> week. yeah, yeah. um and I just realized how unstressed I am about relationships uh, for almost all this year, because even though I did not like the way my previous relationship ended, and again, my, mm -hmm. my, that was my fault. Um, I, when I ended that relationship, I made a promise to myself that like, I wasn't going to just date for like, cause I'm like bored. Like I usually do, or just like, cause someone's around and like, I don't date cause I'm lonely. I just date. Cause I like, I think it's a fun thing to do for sure. And I just like, it's interesting. Or, or just like, I like to like randomly get to know people, I, but I don't actually like the concept of relationships. So I'm not, I'm not exactly sure why I'm doing it, but I'll just like get, I get like, just like get, Get boyfriends randomly and I'm like I don't really feel any real attachment to them but it's hilarious <laughs> um and and so I made a promise that like I'm not gonna just like sleep with people or date people unless I'm like really fucking jazz and most importantly unless they are on my level mm -hmm. um and I don't and I'm the number one I've been very un, unstressed since I made that rule for myself and just completely uninterested in relationships because I literally don't know anyone um who I am interested in who is on my level I know people who are on my level but I, I mean they date, they date models um you know <laughs> and when I say on my level <laughs> when I when I said on my level it's not even that many things I was thinking about like well what do I mean because I need to be clear about like what I'm giving to the relationship yeah if I expect these certain things from people but I want someone who's like attractive i'm attractive i'm not talking i don't need to meet a 10 you know but attractive especially with my taste though it's like people it's like people no one else you're even interested in so it's not a conflict <laughs> um so i need people who are uh, someone who's a, so i'm attracted to i guess yes. is the way to word that um i am attracted to and who i think is like kind of societally attractive but it can be like in a weird jack white kind of a way mm. um mm. and he's like my number one but he's married um jack white Oh, Jack White. Uh, just everything about Jack White I love. Uh, and uh, who is doing well in their career, um, is brave, but not like a fireman brave, brave in how they uh, hold themselves and how they talk to people in the world, which is the concept we were talking about with our guests today, but you won't hear that for a while. Um, and uh, is smart, but like doesn't have to be a genius. I don't actually, I've dated people who are really smart. It's kind of fucking annoying. Um, so like just kind of passive smart and then uh, and I have all those things and it doesn't and I also I left out money because that's like the one thing that I have that I don't require of other people they need to be able to be self-sufficient like I can't be paying their bills but if as long as they can pay their bills and yeah. they don't have a roommate because we're just too old for that at this point mm -hmm. um that's all I need from them. Yeah. And like, if they, it, I, cause I'm like, I'll pay for some stuff for them if they can push their male ego aside and let me possibly be more successful than them. That's uh, cause I was like, there has to be a trade there, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, and I'm yeah. like, that's a, for me, I will literally like, that's, that's me basically agreeing to pay a fee for you to like respect me to be doing better than you. <laughs> that's how, uh, that's a, I Some think that's a nice you. trade. Yeah. I'll take you on a nice trip. Yeah. If you can just fucking control your goddamn ego. <laughs> um, I will pay a fee for that. That's how important that is to me. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah. And I just, and I just went to bed and I go, I am so unstressed about wow. anything about in my relationship life, because I set this rule that is so such a simple rule, mm. but a rule that like, I think we all as women continuously break because we're trying to be, you know, fix little you know, little you know broken you know men who should be at marshalls because they're defective um <laughs> <laughs> i mean uh, and, and uh, it's great and like we're not i'm not in a rush and like so therefore when i meet someone who's on my level i'll go hey bitch you're on my level let's fuck you know <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah. easy and i was uh yeah, it sounds so simple. It re- well, because once you actually set the rule for yourself and then you follow the rule, wild how that it works. It really is very simple. Yeah. Um. And then I and then I, I was li- and I just got I I, for, I was listening to some a, a lot of music li- lately and I I love the song Molly by Lil Dicky because you know he's mostly a joke rap- rapper but he you know a good rapper but he does silly um raps and then he has a song Molly that's actually a beautiful love song and uh, uh, Brandon Yuri from Panic at the Disco is also on it who it's amazing like Brandon Yuri from Panic at the Disco is on so many other people's songs and then I'm like I, and then I try to think of a Panic at the Disco song on my own and I go can't do it because <laughs> he's also he's also on um Taylor Swift's Me oh. and he's featured in the Holy documentary shit. Miss Americana because they show them, you know, working on the track With together. Ja- oh, yeah. So yeah. now I'm just like, now the only time I've thought about Brandon Yuri is when he's on other people's tracks. And sorry, I mean, I know you're very talented and handsome. Um, and then you I was- bad boy, Breen. Yeah, and I w- and this, you know, this song Molly by Lil Dicky is all about how he, you know, basically puts his rap career ahead of, of his girlfriend. And, you know, he's sad and lonely now. And, you know, she under- he understands like why he couldn't, she couldn't wait for him, but he's still brokenhearted about it. And he's mm-hmm. like, you know, in the beginning of the track, he's like, this is the softest thing I've ever done, blah, blah, blah. But then I'm reading the lyrics about like the reasons why he misses this girl, Molly. And I almost I almost choked on my celery juice because <laughs> the, the lines that he writes are who going to let me know to hit my mother on her birthday. He means hit her up, not physically hit her guys. Sorry if you're not, not cool. Like, um, so you're not cool. Um, so he's, he, he likes her because she reminds him about his own mother's birthday, which is something oh, I've done God. for many boyfriends. Well, reminded them about their own mom's birthday. Yeah. I, I convinced my, uh, an, an, an ex to go to thanks to go to Thanksgiving because I mean, this was me uh, in a very emotional place. Cause I like, go, oh, you never know when they're going to die. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, you know, but then he like, he went and he was like, "You're right," and I and I was like, "Listen, I, I understand like." going to your mom's house for Thanksgiving isn't fun in the same way that smoking weed and playing 2K with your boys is. But sometimes you got to do things yeah. because someone like fucking raised you. Uh-huh. I wonder which boyfriend and that loved, was. Loved, <laughs> did you know my impression? Did you get my impression? Um, and he knew I was right, you know? Yeah, yeah. You know, because uh, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm obviously, I'm not dating people who are like sociopaths, except for one maybe, um, who are sociopaths. <laughs> but then it, it's, you know, like to lay, have to lay it out like that. It's like, yeah, no, everything in life doesn't, it ha, isn't going to, you don't get to have the most exciting choice every time, but it's just like, I know. you just do things because that's what you do. I mean, I don't know. I'm like not a rule follower in any way, but it's like, that's what you fucking, it's Thanksgiving. What do you, what do you do? What, if you have a good yeah. relationship with your family, you go hang out with your family. That's what you yeah. fucking do. Right. I don't know how I have to explain this to people. What does Thanksgiving look like if you don't do that? Friendsgiving where you're just like, you know, doing shots of Jaeger mm-hmm. uh, at a, at a fold up table in, in Bushwick. Oh, yeah, no, I mean, I hate Thanksgiving across the board, and my I've made that very clear to my mom. I don't go with a smile on my face, but I go. Right. Yeah. Um, and I love my mom. I just don't like Thanksgiving the holiday. I think it's stupid. Um, oh yeah. And then the food. Yeah, and then it's like, who gonna let me know when I be shopping if a shirt's gay? Again, his language, not mine, but <laughs> hilarious. And we've all done it. We know. We know what that means. And oh, then, God. Um. Uh. And then. Uh, you the best to me girl always baked me something and when it ripped off you replaced my buttons but don't be pissed off if I hate your husband because even when I can't say love ya I love ya this is a rap about the most dysfunctional one-sided relationship I've ever heard and I ruined the song for myself but even like I was like there was not one thing he listed so he basically he told us in this song I love how you make me feel that I love how you make me feel and also I can't even tell you I love you because I have an emotional wall up. (laughs) 
That's what this song is about. And, and he had enough brain power to write about the wall, but not to take it down. And the rest is about how he's so sad and he wants to call her, but he's probably not. And he also needs to still work on this rap game. <laughs> I mean, it's going well for him, but yeah. yeah. And I mean, listen, he's very open about that. And I love, that's why I love the TV show, Dave, which is, you know, Lil Dickie's TV show, really good TV show. Um, and, you know, he does. And, and as someone who also most times is valuing their art over their relationship, like I absolutely understand the sentiment. And that's why I really like him. Um, but I, I, I just like, if I was, if I was writing a rap song, I, and so then I started going through all my my exes and thinking like, if I had to write a rap song about them and and <laughs> tell and you know just spit off fire about why I liked being in a relationship with go them, off, go off. like I would actually list qualities about them, you know, right. Because like what I liked about like James things. was like that he was not afraid to say how he felt even if when everyone else like disagreed and came down on him. And I didn't agree with the, the, what, like what he thought, but I really I really respected that he was open about how he thought. I really respected that quality. Mm. Um, or like, you know, Dylan was just is kind of like walks to the beat of his own drum is kind of peculiar, but like didn't like make apology, you know, for it. Like, yeah, those are like actual like great characters. That's pieces of character. Yeah. 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 Like. Because I, 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 to me, it's like, yeah, one time Dylan went to Dunkin' Donuts and got me a coffee when I didn't feel like walking, but that's not what I would rap about. And seemingly, that's what men would rap about. <laughs> Yo, boo, you cooked me that cooked me that cupcake once. I never forgot it. Yeah, like, I, like did I appreciate that he went to Dunkin' Donuts? Because so I didn't have to... Yes, but yeah. that's not what I remember about our relationship. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well... <sighs> Remember, James, reminder, guys. James, remember when you when you thought that I didn't want to get for Valentine's Day, and then you came in with that one, and I cried, and then you went down to the <laughs> to the market and you got one, but it didn't mean as much because I told you to get it for me. <laughs> 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 but I love the scent of the diffuser, so now I smell it sometimes, and I think of you, <laughs> sir. <laughs> <laughs> like what hey, loser just what is going on oh, uh, i want to write poetry i should just start doing that again uh i being a, a relationships really hold a mirror to stuff you have to work on about yourself and i really gotta work on fucking i gotta build a relationship with myself i thought oh, that's what you, you've been doing i've been trying <laughs> but then it's fucking i i one of the things that was like a result of the how i was raised which is fu like fine but like i don't know how the fuck to fix this mm. and it's not another person is not i, I take full responsibility for this it's because it's it's coming from me i'm just so hyper focused on the other person's wants and needs that i can't fucking mm. enjoy myself mm. yeah even when i i see you do this i fucking yeah. hate it yeah it's miserable it's not fun for me it's depressing it's not even fun for me so no. i can't imagine it's not fun for you <laughs> but i'm like i want so badly to to so what's, not be like this what's the fear that the other person becomes unhappy in your presence and then it's a reflection that of, i'm unlovable and they don't they're gonna leave me it, well, Okay, so they, but they're going to be unhappy if you're in a relationship with, with someone. They're going to be unhappy many times in front of you, but it's not. Oh, be yeah, because of you. No, yeah, that I know. I just, but I, I, I witness myself. It's like a blessing and a curse of being like self aware, because uh, that's certainly something that I've been better at lately. But uh, I just witness witness myself trying hard in all the wrong areas, or just trying in general. Like it's, right. it's just difficult to be myself i find lately and i'm like i don't know why like i and, and then when i focus on it that makes it worse well it's interesting because i <laughs> was in you know we were in a green room all actually mike was there too we were in a green room with your with your boyfriend and you um you know this weekend that was the first time that i you know uh, that he had been in a green room with uh, us yeah um, i mean that i but it's interesting because he felt more comfortable in the green room than you did and it was your green room and yeah. I that, like I observed that, but I'm yeah. like, and I know why you were doing that because it's you were like you had guests in your green room, but it was just, yeah, I guess it was. But just, I don't want to be doing this. No, no, no. I know you don't. Ugh. I was like, it was just interesting to to observe, right. you know? Yeah, because it's like I mean. I, I understand to an extent because like you always want to take care of your guests and I mean that's kind of like why I like I like bet, ban me, you know men I'm dating from my workspaces a lot so yeah. that I because I'm like I just need to concentrate on the task at hand like that's the most important thing I don't fucking care you know 
like you know and also you know i love to date a wanderer so my boyfriend's always wandering i <laughs> yeah, gotta put on a fucking like <laughs> you can need a leash i need to put out some kind of a leash on them like we got a chip of, and electric fences that you know up uh, because corn guys in the in the in the a green room yeah um yeah <clears throat> but yeah no well with that too like i had just done a half hour stand-up before and i for some reason i do not like when somebody i'm dating watches me do stand-up oh that's right i was there twice. but yeah. it was something i was really like oh this is like a little test like i really need to get through that i need to get over mm. this and i and i really want to yeah and it's not anything the other person's doing at all it's all coming from me and i just can't it's just like the voices in my head are just so exhausting it's just so exhausting it's just exhausting to think about yourself all the time and then yeah the self awareness just do like a test maybe like if someone you know uh like if someone like it like have him like say you're you're he's thirsty and then go okay there's stuff in the fridge instead of getting it for him like a, li- like a, like a yeah, little that, test that, yeah and th- those those aren't some like i i'm definitely mindful of like do you need anything do you need, i don't do that stuff uh in the green room is different because if it's i don't know if i don't you know I, th- that was a different situation but i'm talking just like chilling at home like i just why can't i relax i can't relax so like so okay so is it actual things that you're doing or thoughts that you're having thoughts so like okay so you're sitting on a couch watching tv what are you thinking like oh wh- what what are we doing like just looking to him of like what to do or like what are we doing next like it's just i fucking oh. it's so exhausting and it's yeah. not and it's not like i said it's all coming from me and i remember i was like that with steven like i fucking I hated it. And I'm like, I want to enjoy mm. being in a relationship. Yeah. Cause I'm like, I, you know, in the beginning of a relationship, I could see having a little bit of thoughts like that just because you're not like a comp, you know, hundred yeah. percent comfortable in each other's space. But like, I'm very, com- I'm so well, know, comfortable around this person. You've known this person for a long time too. Yeah, so it's yeah. not like, yeah, I just, but I, I, Oh my God. I just, it like, it breaks my heart in a way. Cause I'm like, why can't I, I want to get to this place where I can just be my fucking self. Right. I, I and, I, and there's still these remnants of not not uh yeah i guess a little it's a mixture between not knowing who i am or like not knowing myself enough or something and just my antennas are pointed at everybody else and right. not me and it's like like you know if some if if i can i can definitely i'm getting good at like if someone's upset about something and just like giving holding space for them and going oh that must be hard not right. trying to not trying to fix somebody's problems yeah that i'm that i'm super good at now right um but i just i don't know i just can't relax huh. and it's and i hate that i want to be able to but then once you once you kind of realize that and you're like all right christina relax like and then you're over you're thinking about you it relax. even more yeah. yeah and so i'm like i just gotta you know p- part of me i know this isn't the solution this is the what was me part of me is like oh, just be alone but it is easier well i mean is it for you that didn't seem easy either your, yeah it's both life is hard guys. Your, i was like because i was like your feedback on that wasn't like five stars no <laughs> right 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 for sure um but i you know i because I, I i i go yeah i agree with you for, from it, that easier yeah yeah for sure. yeah yeah i just don't yeah i just um I just it's I need just to be more comfortable with myself in a relationship. Well, okay. So are your antennas pointing it towards other people because like you care about how they feel more than how you feel? No, it's coming from a fear of I don't want you to leave me. And that's without them giving any indication. But the behavior that you are exhibiting makes it more likely for them to leave you. For sure. Okay. So yeah. as long as you know that. <laughs> no, I do. Yeah, I, I'm okay, literally so that's step one. I'm pushing to... people away when I don't want to. No one, can, it, it, it's <laughs> it's the same as in relationships uh, as it is in the entertainment industry as it is in anything. You know, you know, I call it like, you know, Victoria's Secret Syndrome, how they basically, when you go into Victoria's Secret, everyone's like, can I help you? Can I help you? Can I help you? Like, I feel like women yeah, are like yeah. that a lot in relationships. Right. I used to just leave I used to just <laughs> yeah. turn fully around and leave Victoria's Secret when they would do that because right. I wanted to buy stuff in the store, but I found that behavior so obnoxious. Same. You know, yeah. and, I, and I work for the company, so I know this is not just in my head. You have to ask people again, and I've talked about on the show three times. Yep. And it's so irritating. If they need help before you leave them alone. I, you know what it what is? What a crazy I, company policy. Yep. <laughs> I find myself acting all the qualities that that chipped away at me from my mom. 
is what how I act, how I how I find myself sometimes acting. Wait, what do you? Uh, the, the, the qualities. I'm sorry. Can you just rephrase? Like, 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 um, like the, the, the the how my mom would act towards me. I find myself like, like doing a a lesser version of that. Just like, um, but I thought your mom like under underpaid attention. Uh, well, I guess in some ways no, she overpaid she attention overpaid. to you. She uh, in the yeah, wrong ways. Exactly. I, I understand, exactly. I yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. So I just I just feel the remnants of it, and I think mm. um, you know I love I think. One of the things that I, I've changed about my, my outlook on relationships is I have no stake in how this turns out. Meaning I am not, if, if really? this ends, if this mm. ends tomorrow, it's okay. Like it's not, so that makes it less of a, like oh, a live good. or die thing. Yeah. So, um, so that's good. What? Can I ask you a question just about. I uh, love when Mike raises his hand. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I don't like I to push, push in. Um, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you, obviously you're talking primarily about your relationship with yourself and I guess specifically how it pertains to romantic relationships. It's just unease. I'm just not at ease in a relationship. Right. So you have, you keep referring to the things that you don't want to be like that you've taken from your mom, mm -hmm. right? Do you have a person in your life, even if it's like someone in your past, who you admire the way that they sort of behave and act in like the way they walk through life. Like when I was, when you guys had me as like a guest on the show, I talked mm -hmm. about my hot gilf grandpa, mm -hmm. who to me now is sort of like a, like a beacon for the way I aim to behave as an adult. Yeah. And like I, there are plenty of people in my life who do things that irritate me and I, I see it creep in sometimes. And then I always sort of reset with my grandpa as somebody mm. who I thought was just like a cool character. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Like coast, and that's how I kind of like set my, my compass essentially. Mm, Do you yeah. have a like person like that for yourself? <laughs> no. <laughs> I think that would be helpful. I yeah, don't either though. Yeah, yeah. Well, the only you know the only person I remember you used to say you really liked the way your old boss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Used to speak to her partner. Yeah, be yeah, because of how I witnessed her with her partner is like they just reserved. They were just they spoke so highly of each other, and like when they were apart and when they were together, they were just really happy to see each other. I mean that and that I have. Well, like with this person I'm seeing now, it's just we we we're just we we are very sensitive people, and it's just nice to just be told like just to b butter me up. You know what I mean? Like and just it's so sweet and mm. kind and like childlike in, but not in a in an immature way but in like a sweet way you know which we both really value so that's nice um i just yeah i'm thinking about it too much which is making it worse and so i Always. don't know where yeah. to, i don't know where to pivot from there because i really want to enjoy myself in in a relationship and and enjoy you know enjoy it and I, and I do a lot of the time I think one of the other things is when I PMS um, I know a lot of some women PMS some don't some are pretty mellow and that there's not really many changes but uh, all the qualities that I don't like about myself it feels like they get so magnified when I'm PMSing and the voices in my head are just such Ugh, they're just they won't leave me alone well doesn't pms only last a couple of days can't you just like not hang out with your partner during those days or only like limit the time until yeah, you I adjust should. a little bit better yeah 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 i gotta <clears> start i gotta start doing that i guess um because that's very easy i mean like who the fuck likes to hang out with a boyfriend like like that's like me like on day one of my period like i'll never see a human on day one of my period <laughs> yeah Bye. when i get my period i'm like everything's great I'm right because like, that's i don't Earth pms mother. so like but it's just like for me like day one like you're just like for fucking Scrap, yeah. erupting yeah. Yeah, yeah, right, 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 right. No one wants to be around anyone. Yeah. Well, and also another thing is like, I feel lost. Well, maybe like, maybe so sometimes like if it's hard to make an internal change, you can like, you know, start with an external change. The same way if you're like getting in character for a play. Yeah. So it's like if you're having trouble, like maybe the director would suggest, you know, coming in costume um, to the next rehearsal because mm -hmm. sometimes that helps. So it's like, I know you said like you, you try too hard aesthetically in the beginning. So like, what if like you also like, not, I'm not saying like look unattractive, but like, Dress down, like be in oh, that sweats, I do. that I do, and like that, that will help do. you be more comfortable. That I, that I already do, that I already do, and I'm and I'm very comfortable with that. Like, um, it, it's so interesting because like we we talked about like breaking out stuff. I've been breaking out like crazy lately, but um, but oddly, I'm I force myself. I'm like, this is a really good experiment, Christina, because your value is not in how your skin is. So you just have right. to fucking force yourself to accept that, even if while you're you know hanging out with your boyfriend and your skin is just 
on fire. You just have to fucking get over it. And I have. And so that's good. I still, it's a struggle, but you know, uh, I can force myself to do it and push myself and go, this is not your value. Um, your value isn't who you are. Um, so that's, that's something like, there's these little experiments that I kind of give myself, these little like tests that I give myself to mm -hmm. just say like, you know, really force yourself to be comfortable with this, even though you're, you're not, and you feel like you're, you're on fire. Um, so you feel like that the whole time? Not the whole time. Oh. No, I just. Uh, but it creeps. It creeps in and it's just. Um, Have you told him? Mm, yeah, yeah, a little bit, a little bit. What did um, he say? Uh, just you don't have to be worried about that. I mean, it's just he's just reassuring, but like right. it doesn't help me. You right, know, of course, of course. Because the problem is coming from inside the house. Right. What, you know what, what is he going to say? Yeah, you're acting weird, you stupid bitch. You know? <laughs> Honestly, that would <laughs> right. probably made me feel good. But right. um, but yeah, yeah, I don't know. I just, um, I just find myself getting lost in like f trying to figure out who I am. And when you don't have a full grip on it, a relationship is going to magnify that. I feel like it holds them, you know, you're, you're mirrored, right? So mm -hmm, it's like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, oh mm -hmm. my gosh. And I, and I, under, I at least know that I understand that like, okay, this is, I just wish my brain would shut up sometimes. That's all. Hmm. I'm trying to think, uh, yeah, I'm like, I, I, I don't know the answer to that. I'm like, but if anyone has any recommendation, I'm, I'm curious. I'm like, there has to be, I'm like, I'm like wondering like what a ther therapist would say or recommend yeah, I don't for know. this. I don't have one right Because moment, it's like but. about, it's about being, you know, it's like really a, being more present, which yeah. is something I think that we all struggle with. I struggle with being present, but because I'm thinking about like my obsessive need for success. Yeah. You know, so that's not, which, but I don't include relationships in that. Right, right, right. Care. Well, I, I almost, it's almost like I'm too hyper focused on the wrong thing. Like right, it's like, um, right. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. And I know, I know I have it in me to, 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 to be, to enjoy myself in a relationship and to be a great partner and to be fucking, you know, who, wh whoever I am that day, like, and, and, and to accept myself. <laughs> <laughs> whoever I'm I am that bitch. day. That's really funny. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, like, I've, you know, part of like the work, doing work on yourself is like going, okay, just being curious about whatever state you're in and going, all right, I noticed that this is how I'm feeling. Yeah. Okay. And then that's it. Not saying it's good or bad. Right. Not criticizing yourself for it. I've, I've been getting really good at that. It just, it's, I'm still finding myself uh you know not all the time but enough that it bugs me where i'm just like <sighs> well it's, it's like, just like you should be able to enjoy their relationship me? yeah you yeah. know it, it's good you know it's good that you're like it, you know because it's like oh i'm not enjoying something that i work for slash earn slash yeah. i know you're supposed to earn love but we all do um <laughs> and <laughs> we're all doing something and uh and and spend so much time doing work on yourself that you would yeah. that you should be able to just kind of sit back and enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. And there and there's so there's I would say it's like sixty forty sixty percent enjoying it, laid back, totally cool. That's a big percentage though. Yeah, but the four that forty percent kills me. No, I'm saying the forty percent is a big. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah, that's that's, a, that's a that's a large yeah. Yeah. amount of time. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. Agreeing it should with be you. like ninety. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It should be like 98 two. Or that, you know, that's <laughs> fair. <laughs> Corinne's a little less neurotic than me and Christina, I think. I mean, listen, yeah, listen, yeah. I'm not like, obviously I guess it in is the, neurotic, in I the guess. beginning it's of a relationship, we're all trying to sell ourselves and get the other person to like, obviously I'm not immune from that. Yeah. Of course, of course. But when once I've gotten the person in my home, I'm not, concerned about it any right more because right. yeah they're well, then there you, yeah and that's when you exist and you're each other and you grow together and you just fucking have fun like to me i'm like well what do i want in a relationship i just want to enjoy my time with the person when we're together right that's it right and i and i know now enough to no go this person's not going to solve my problems this person i'm responsible for m feeling safe i'm responsible for my self-esteem i'm responsible for my happiness and my joy and i'm responsible for uh you know um, allowing people in my life that treat me the way that I want to be treated, you know, like that kind of stuff. And so that I know, like mm. I, I am making strides. I'm making a lot of strides. There, there's so many things that, you know, I look back at my last relationship, that last major one, where I just bypassed so many things that I should not have tolerated. Um, but that's, you know, that's the that's the beauty of, of gr growing up um, sure. and having life experience. And I think dating really teaches you so much about yourself and so much about the world and, 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 and what you want out of life. And so, so, yeah part of it's like fit it's 
and then the other half of me is like just fucking don't think about it well yeah but if you could if you could just tell yourself not to think about it and then actually not think about it yes that would be wouldn't that be an excellent solution for sure yeah 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 yeah. all right i gotta think about that this i gotta join like a zog sports team or something this is like a puzzle (laughs) well because one of the things that i've been doing lately when i find myself in these ruts is like i go rollerblading i go rollerblading prospect park it fucking it's so helpful it's incredible but it's getting so fucking cold out it's it's, so that's gonna be that's gonna be going is there an indoor rink uh, for rollerblading, not that I know of, but I have any, a gym in my building that I. Oh, because I, I was like any ice. Uh, I, I'm sorry, any uh, roller skating rink you can rollerblade in. That's true. That's true. I just don't know where Is like there a, one. There, I, I mean, there, there's roller fun. rinks in uh, in in New York City for sure. I just don't know if there's one like close where it makes sense to her mm. for her. Yeah, yeah. Because I used to always, I never roller skated. I always used to always rollerblade in roller ranks. Oh, yeah. Mm. In the 90s? Come yeah, on. hell yeah. Because everyone would have a roller roller rink birthday party. Oh, I know. Those are the days. Hell yeah, United States. Yep. Girl, mm. w- Girl Scout trips, we would go on, we would go sleep overnight and just like sleep on the hardwood floor and be like, this is fucking awesome. <laughs> oh, that's so fun. And then you're like, and then all of the moms were like, this is not awesome. I'm ha- My back will hurt for the rest of the month because of this. Where was United States? Was that in Plainfield? Uh, uh, this is an off cop off my conversation but oh, i used to love a roller rank i bet we went to the same one growing up yeah there. i'm sure we did of course <laughs> Ugh. wow guys you know who's great our guest yeah yeah you you nailed it our guest <laughs> she's a stand-up comedian her special la vie on roads is now available to watch on youtube please ladies and gentlemen welcome to guys we fucked erica, erica rose <laughs> With Santa Community and Erica Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Thanks for Happy having to have me. You. Big fan. Ditto. <laughs> we are a big fan of yours as well. Um, you, you don't live in New York, you said. You, no, you, I live in LA. Oh, okay. Just visiting. How 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 long are you here? Uh till tomorrow. Do you like you don't like it? Do you like it? I love it, but I but so I'm too overstimulated here. It's yeah. just too many people it's and insane. they're in your space. And I just I need like I'm too slow now. I can't like keep up. I can't keep up yeah. with people. No, like the pushed. crowd. Yeah, you have yeah. to like, you have to know we what's ha- I'm like on my phone looking where I'm going. I'm yeah. just. We walk uh, with a vengeance here. I feel LA now. You're a gentle LA lady now. I think so. I'm like, I'm, t- I'm <laughs> a gentle a- LA lady. That's <laughs> gentle. nice. I like that. That's a nice name for a special. Yeah, gentle, yeah, gentle LA, LA, lady. LA lady. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's yours, baby. I, I used to live in New York, but now it just oh. feels foreign to me. I'm like, where do I go? How do I get places? <laughs> Yeah, it, it's it, you can forget. It's it's weird how quickly you can forget. I mean, if my hometown, I go back and I go, I couldn't drive to my house from here. I have no yeah. idea. Oh, really? Oh, that shit's ingrained uh-uh. in my memory. Unfortunately, <laughs> no, I have no idea. Well, I left before I I drove really. So, where are you from originally? Boston. Oh, outside Boston. That's like Philly's crackhead brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Boston's what we say. intense. I love it. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> and you've been in the entertainment business since you were a child, correct? Yeah, kind of. I mean, if you Reach count radio, Ra- I was Prairie radio. Home companion, yeah. So radio's not exactly the entertainment business. But it's <laughs> it like is a now. subset. Yeah, yeah now I, I, like I got back. into radio before podcasts existed. That's yeah. that's how old I am. <laughs> <laughs> and did your family like give you the option or did you did you ask to do that like what how did you well, get into it I started with ballet I was really into ballet and then my mom also had me get an agent because I used to be really I don't know I, I used to like join the singers in the uh, subway mm-hmm. and like sing with them and stuff as a kid yeah as a kid that's great so I was really outgoing as, in in ways like that but I was really shy too so I liked ballet and then my mom signed me up for an agent and I started doing acting when I was like five. Oh, nice and then I did the radio show when I was 10. wow did you like any did you get acting jobs as a kid a couple but I wasn't into the auditions mm. and my mom always wanted me to like wear makeup or a cute outfit and I didn't <laughs> like, like that. Ramsey it yeah yeah I didn't yeah. I was not into that yeah so then what, what was why was she pushing so hard then she wasn't pushing hard. She just, she was a perfectionist. Mm. So she was kind of like, oh, if you're going to do it, you should do it the right way. Okay. And then when she realized that I didn't want to be an actress was when I refused to audition for a show called Zoom, which was before Zoom existed. It was this big Zoom show. And I think they filmed it in Boston. And I was like, this is beneath me. <laughs> wow. I was like, I'm not auditioning for this crap. Yeah. And so my mom, so then my mom was like, I guess she's not serious about this and took me out of the I agency. guess I'm not, mom. Yeah. I so like, she said, I guess she's not serious about this more than like, okay, honey, we can do something else. Well, I don't remember. I don't think she guilted me that much, okay. but I think she realized, oh, she doesn't really want to do this. Yeah. I think I did like doing it. I just didn't want to do it. 
I just, there were certain things I didn't want to do. Yeah. You know, yeah, I wanted yeah. to be able to say no from yeah. an early age. I think that's fair. Kids yeah. are not encouraged to say no. They're I not encouraged lot. to say no. But and then I was really it. into ballet. So I wanted to be a ballet dancer. Nice. How long did you do ballet for? Till I was 16. And then uh, I quit cold turkey one day. Cold turkey. Really? Like cold turkey. It was like an addiction. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I like walked in and I was like, I, I'm not going to be the best. Uh, and so I didn't understand as a kid that you don't have to be the best. You could just enjoy doing it. Mm, right. So I was like, that's it. If I'm not the best, what's the point of any of this? Wow. And I walked out and I never went back. Wow. <laughs> oh, was that your mom's you perfectionism? <laughs> I think it might have been. I, what I wish is I wish someone talked to me about it. Right. No one talked to me and my family about it. They oh. weren't like, do you want to think about this? They were like, oh, you want to quit? Okay. Oh, they just let you quit. They let me quit, which huh. I'm like, why? Mm. Why you quit? You're kind of quitting on me, fam, by letting yeah. me quit on ballet. I mean, I could have done modern ballet. Like, there, I could have done other kinds of ballet where you didn't need to be so good at it. Yeah. <laughs> and I was good. I was good. I just, it's you like. You weren't the best. I wasn't Sophie who could get her leg up to her ear. Oh, you know? okay. Yeah. I wasn't like yet. That. Yet. Yeah. It's true. But ballet, I mean, man, that's it's very taxing on your body, but also like you have to keep the the ballerinas that I knew that cuz I went to Marymount Manhattan College and people majored in oh, ballet. Oh yeah, there. I remember knowing and, people from there. Yeah, and there whew, your weight is everything yep. and obviously practicing and stuff, but I'm like Oh, fuck that. I mean, oh, your weight yeah. is already everything in the acting business. I majored in acting there, but I was oh, like, yeah. I'd rather be able to like have a belly if I wanted to. No, I had all sorts of eating issues. I wouldn't eat all day long. And fuck. then I would eat like an entire box of cereal for dinner. Whoa. Yeah. Because you were so fucking hungry. I was starving. Did anybody talk to you about that? Mm, once, maybe. My mom was like, I think you need to eat. And then she gave me, she kept buying like candy bars or something. Oh, wow. To try to get me to eat. Or these like granola bars that were like basically candy bars. Yeah. Yeah. Like the chewy but, ones. No, I had yeah major eating issues. Fuck. I, was, I think I weighed 90 pounds when Damn. I was 16. And how tall are you? Like 5'4". Yeah. Damn. Yeah. That's little. So That's 90. little. I know. I what like, do they say to you while you're in ballet about your weight? I mean, there was like Miss... We had this woman named Miss Leonard who was like this old, old school teacher. And she, we'd go to, you know, we'd have Thanksgiving break and she'd be like, don't eat too much. Oh, um, God. You know, things like that. And the Russian yeah. teachers were always like, don't eat too much. Oh my they God. always told you not to eat. And all the, it was mostly peer pressure though, because everybody would like compete with how little they ate right. in the group. Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I went to ballet camp and no one ate, you know, I used There's to no cafeteria at ballet I camp. I used to take a minute between bites. I'd be like, I'll take a bite and then I'll wait. Oh God. And then that's going to drive you another, nuts. Oh yeah. No, I was like OCD. Yeah. 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 Crazy. Wow. Yeah. Ballet is bad. It can be for bad. psyche. Can be bad. Well, how, so like just logistically, how small do you actually have to be to do it correctly? I mean, it doesn't, it seems like, yeah, I get it that you have to be thin and in shape, but it, you have to be the do you tiniest? Have to be that thin. I mean, you kind of do because men yeah. have to lift you eventually. And like the eventually men who are in ballet are not They're sick. not that strong. Well, right. some of them are pretty strong, but they have to like, yeah, you have to like. Maybe they should lift weights lifted. while yeah. you're not eating. Right. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't seem like they're doing a lot. Right. I think also on point, it's it's bad for your feet already if you have the weight on your feet. Mangled, yeah. And so you have to, yeah, be thin for that. Ballerina Starve feet yourself. is one of my obsessions, just like looking it up uh, online and oh, just seeing oh how fucked God, up it is. Oh my God, that I can't look at that. I follow a lot of ballet dancers. You do? I like watching them prepare their shoes. There's something really you soothing know, about it. I have it. like it PTSD where I can't even watch ballet now. Oh God. I can't, really? yeah, I can't watch it. So, uh, so you quit cold turkey. You never went back, but you were, all, but you, but you, there is there something in your heart that miss, uh, misses it because you said I you mean, wanted probably, someone to talk to you about it. But it's kind of like one of those things where, like, once you give it up, you like can't go back. Yeah, you just can't go back. And then did yeah. your did your did your eating issues subside when you left? I think they did because then I started running track. I did mm -hmm. like oh, I was great. really into running, and you need to eat a lot for that. Yeah. So I think oh. that's probably healthier. Yeah. I started eating more carbs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not just a box of cereal. Yeah. Jeez. And then, so when did you finally um, kind of decide that you wanted to make entertainment your career? Um, geez, it's a good question because then I went to music school. Then I dropped out of that and joined acting school. 
music you were going to sing it. or play an instrument? A cello. I was a cello major. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. College. You yeah. have a lot of talents. <laughs> I, you do have a lot of talents. The cello, you got to lug that thing around, man. I know. I, Woo, that's so a commitment. So I brought it to New York and I would. Oh, my God. This is a funny story because you know how like people are always talking about manifesting things. Yes. Yeah. So my dream was to go to the Manhattan School of Music after I, I dropped out of BU. I was a cello major at BU, but I wanted wow. to go to conservatory. Yeah. I was like all or nothing. I was like, I, I need to like, oh, I only want to practice my cello. I don't want to take classes. Yeah. So, so I had moved to New York already because I was dating a guy who lived here and I wanted to go to the Manhattan School of Music. And so I had us move next door to it. <laughs> Oh. And then I didn't get in. Oh. And then I got into Queens College. They had a good oh, you music take program. Your cello all I had to take. I we lived by Manhattan, and I took my cello. I took two trains and a bus with my cello. Oh wow. my god! To study Girl. there for six months. Wow, that was God saying, "That's not how you manifest, bitch." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Damn. You don't move next to the place. You just think about it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So funny. But then I got into San Francisco Conservatory and I went out and I didn't love the school. And I flew back and I sat next to this female filmmaker. She was like this woman who was amazing. And she had just made some film. And I, it, to this day, it drives me crazy. I don't remember her name. Huh. I cannot remember her name. So if you're listening to this and you're the woman who sat next to me on the plane... <laughs> You had an impact on my life because at the end of the the train the plane ride, I was like, "What should I do, the music or the acting?" She goes, "Do the acting." Wow, and it's you were just like, fun. "Okay," and I was like, "Okay, she's so cool." Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I want to be that woman, you know. And I went to the Atlantic Theater Conservatory. And oh I was shit, an acting major, yeah. and I loved it. Yeah, I love that school. Majoring in acting is fucking. It was fun. amazing. Yeah. yeah, and it was yeah, it was just fun. The teachers were amazing. The experience was good. I didn't have to learn music, which I wasn't great at learning. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, same. I just yeah. learned Shakespeare. You said a memorized shit. Yeah, yeah. Way easier. Just felt it in your bones. And then to so the guy that you moved to New York for, did you end up staying with him? For um, a- I was I dated him for three and a half years. He was oh. probably my healthiest relationship, honestly. And we're still friends to this oh, that's day. Nice. His name's Jer- Jeremy. Why'd you break up? I was just really young. Yeah. yeah. And I just felt like I wanted to like experience other people i mean i, I yeah. met him when i was 19 yeah yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah. it was so young yeah to like move he was the only guy i've ever lived with oh yeah and oh my god so you lived with him when you yeah. were 20 or 19 Did you uh, i think you i moved in? in when i was about 21 wow okay nice mm. but i loved um living in new york and i thought new york was the coolest place to live yeah and, and we had a great abusive, rela- we had like cool. yeah we had a healthy relationship was like, he your really- age he was older. Like he, how much? I met him when I was 19 and he was 23. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Back bad. then, that was big. You were like, ooh, I'm a Right out of high school. Really? And he so... was in college and it was like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. was edgy. To, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah, because you're, you're just exiting the years where a year older is like, what? Yeah. Oh, what? Uh, you can't talk to me yet. Like, I'm yeah. an older man. He's 23. Yeah, 23. That's wow. So I can't just now even thinking about a 19 year old and a 23 year old cohabitating and having In like a, a healthy relationship. Way. It feels like silly to it's think totally about. It's totally crazy. That's yeah. so sweet, totally. though. How, in what ways was it healthy? We were like really good friends, Aww. you know, we and we did fun and projects fucked? to get. Yeah. Wow. Nice. He, he, I mean, the first he was my first. Aww. He was like, great. Yeah, he was great. He was like, um, now I, I said his name and then I but it doesn't matter. I didn't say his full name. Oh, yeah. We can but anyway, you want. no, it's fine. But no, he we just like had a really fun relationship. Mm-hmm. You know, it was like we did adventures together we made films together he, could, he talked to my parents that, i don't know how he did this he talked both of our sets of parents into giving money to fund our short film up that ended up being about incest <laughs> <laughs> it was <laughs> the one that and, got away yeah. <laughs> oh, God. and i don't know how he did that he was he, he told did them he that, include the topic in the pitch no definitely why not. do you make a movie about incest with your boyfriend we thought it was so cool. We thought it was edgy. <laughs> cool. we, are, we are fans oh, of it? Vincent Gallo. Oh, yeah. okay. okay. Not okay. that he did that, but I think, right. you know, that would be in his yeah. turf. Right. And we just thought it was really cool. Yeah. And I played like the girl at home from high school and he played the guy, the brother. So you made a porn. 
so you made a brother sister. I don't even remember incest what it w- what I don't remember what happened in it. I just hey, remember- boyfriend, you want to make a brother sister? That is film? what an it's interesting. It's not pornographic. It's real. He got her parents to fund this. How That's much what money I- did he get? I was he trying- got a thousand dollars from both. Wow. Of them. And then did you like sit around and watch it as a group? I think <gasps> it was not great. I mean, I have not seen. No, I don't think they ever saw it. They never asked about it. Good. No, I yeah, want to see it. I'm dying. Want- to I want to see it. Yeah, I think yeah. it might have been called something Vince. Because <laughs> my brother Vince. Something. Yeah, my brother. <laughs> what was it called? Oh, oh my, my god. god! It was yeah. Wow. And then I was also with him during. Remember the blackout? Were you guys here during the blackout? We were together. No. Oh no, no, no not that. Oh, that, oh, that was, was Hurricane Sandy. One. That was a different one. That was a blackout. Of I, many okay, so yes, I was during here. There I think a during the blackout. I didn't move blackout. here yet. I, someone was just telling me about that. And In 2000. We were with. I was with him and this girl that I was jealous of at the time, who was friends with him, who he like invited over to be like, look, there's nothing to be jealous of. So she came Let over. Let me invite her over weird. during a blackout. She was over before the blackout and then got stuck there all night because of the blackout. Oh, no. And then You're manifesting wrong. We had these friends who were dominatrixes living next door. And they were and getting fucked? We, no, we... Oh. <laughs> well, probably, but yeah. not, not by us. Yeah. But we ended up doing a whole film during the blackout with these dominatrix girls and, like, the other neighbors. Wow, yeah, because that's such a rare it opportunity. Was like To see... Yeah. To be in New York. just making films. Yeah, we were making... We were just creative, so we just made stuff. That's you know? fun. But that's... that's yeah. yeah, it Wait, is. Why were yeah. you jealous of that girl? Like, what... Did he give you reason to be? Or is it just, like, you know... Um, because they were good friends and she was really cool. She was, like, an artist and they had been friends forever so he was always bringing her up as the friend you know yeah the friend, yeah, yeah, the yeah girl that, he, like, like romanticizes the friendship or something or? yeah i think maybe he had a crush on her in high school yeah so i yeah. knew that and yeah. i just and she was just a little too cool yeah yeah, yeah. did that ever come to fruition like after did you broke up no, they never date. Really? Because I always feel friends. like I can, I literally, I'm like my track record for calling who the person is going to date and ex is like pretty oh, spotless. Nice. Nice. That's, yeah. That's a fun gift. Yeah. It's like, yeah. oh, oh, how surprising. It's exactly who I thought he it was going to be. He did date our 18 year old neighbor. Oh. Who he, he hooked up with, who had, I knew he had a crush on and he dated her when we broke up, but I think it was like kind of like a rebound yeah, situation. Yeah. yeah. How did you know he had a crush on her? She would sit on our fire escape and we called her Scout from um, Scout from To Kill a Mockingbird. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's and very cool. Share, I shared a, a fire escape with her and she was really gorgeous. Mm. And she was eight, like 18 and it was just like a given. Yeah, obviously. She's just always on the fire escape. <laughs> Yeah, she's like this hot girl. You gotta oh, if you're always it's around, like, it's eventually gonna work out for girl you. On the yep. fire yep. escape. Yep, yep, like yep. Funny. Damn, you had hotties left and right. You yep. fly swatting these bitches. <laughs> yep. Damn, it's I, so funny dealing with like you know because uh, in relationships there's gonna be jealousy or like or oh, just like yeah. situations that pop up. Not there's even jealousy, but be like someone. Yeah, yeah. And it's like how you deal with that. How that evolve, how the way you deal with it evolves as you get older is very right. interesting to me. Thank God we get better as we age. Yeah, because I was confident. not cool about that shit. And no. now I'm like, oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, you want to fuck her? OK, let's talk about it. It's weird because I don't remember being as jealous as I feel like I should have been. I don't remember that. But maybe huh. because I was like, you know, looking to experiment on my own. Yeah, yeah. exactly. You Sometimes they're like, oh, this is I actually want... going to just work out for me. Yeah. 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 I wanted to meet other people, too. Yeah. So maybe I was like, OK. Yeah, this is perfect. How'd you break up? Oh, I think I was pretty not good. I think I just said I'm that means yeah I think I met it's not that I cheated on him but I think I had met someone and then I said I think I want to move out yeah you have someone you have someone lined up kind of I didn't that's the best way I don't think I intended that (laughs) not for the other person no No. it's the worst way for them but like no it's terrible if I'm going to break up I would love to have somebody lined up but I don't know honestly now I don't remember exactly the time like I don't remember the time stamp of when we broke up versus when I met the other person. Yeah. So I think um, maybe I did it the right way. But we but things were getting messy. Yeah. You know, we had both cheated on each other. Oh, you yeah. already cheated on each other. Yeah, we both had already cheated. How'd you find out? I think we both told each other. Oh, at the same time? All right, um, let's share a secret. One, God, two, three. So I cheated. Ago. I don't. It was so long ago. Yeah, oh, it yeah. is. So that's what we find on this show. Yeah. It's so hard to correctly remember uh, the re- relationship, and often the two parties will remember. Just remember. Yeah, yeah. that's what yeah. your brain kind of does that naturally. I mean, anyway. it was so long ago. I just remember it was getting messy, and then I wanted to like move out because it was too soon to m- get married. Yeah, and I want. I thought maybe we get back together. Maybe we wouldn't. And yeah. then I just moved out, and then 
start dating this other guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And nice. how'd that go? Well, I met him at Columbia. He went to Columbia University. Mm-hmm. And um, he he was a friend of a mutual friend who was also going to Columbia. And my friend invited me to a party and she goes, whatever you do, don't talk to this guy. Oh, so God. of course, so that's who I wanted to talk, talk to. The only person he was the hottest talking to. guy there. And eventually, and I sat, I was kind of shy and I sat down in a corner and he just sits down next to me and he goes, yo. And it was to to this day, uh, yeah. It was the hottest. It was the hottest hi. pickup line I've ever had. Is a guy just wow. being like, and with a South African accent. Oh, oh. Yo. so he goes yeah. yo yo, and I was just like in love. Wow. So what? So what? So I'm I'm sure all the things that you know the reason that that your friend had said don't talk to him were true. Yes. And yes. So a girl never warns another gal if that's no, not shit. Ain't. But also true. like women very rarely heed the warning. Oh right? yeah. Never do. Which they is warn. I actually a warning is almost like an incentive yeah. to want to do it. More of an invitation. I find not. Yeah. I find not giving the warning is actually the best thing you can do. Yeah. To like yeah. protect the friend, but it's so hard because you you, you want to help but you don't know how to help. Yeah. So what, like, what, what was so the, the things funny thing about, about him is he wasn't a bad guy. He was just very unavailable emotionally, uh, which tends to be my type now. Ooh, mm. yeah, and yeah. he wasn't bad. It's just that he was so into his studies, and I thought he was kind what of a, a player, but he was like really into making money. Okay, oh, and he's a hustler. He was a hustler at a young age. He really wanted to make money. And he immigrant was, mentality, man. Yes. They're ahead of and the he had game. lost his father at a young age. Mm. So it gave him a you know, he felt responsible for his whole family. Yeah. He had a oh, sister, wow. he had a little sister, a little brother, and a mother who wasn't making much money. Oh wow. And I okay. think That's he a had a lot of drive to make money. Yeah. Yeah. And Aww. Step up for his family. But I didn't know this. I just yeah. knew that I was waiting around, waiting for him all the time. I would sit on my fire escape pretending to smoke cigarettes because I didn't pretending. really smoke them, but I would yeah. kind of like do this. And I was, just, I would just like pine after him. Like, when am I going to hear from him? When am I going to hear yeah. from him? I was so in love with him. Wow. In and love? I was madly in love. Wow. Yeah. But he was very like passive. Did he yeah. ever say I love you to you? Yeah. I think we said we loved each other. That's nice. Yeah. I found a book. He gave me like a Herman Hess book. You know, Damien, you know, mm-hmm. the Herman Hess uh, trend when you go through that as a, <laughs> yeah, as a, angsty as a college 20 year old. Yeah. And so he gave me that book and I found it the other day and it was like, you know, with all my love Aww. signed. It's a, it's a very specific guy that like gifts, gifts a heavy book and then <laughs> writes in it. Like I had someone yeah. gift me the communist manifesto. Wow. You know? Wow. Yeah, that's it? romantic. He wrote a note atta- <laughs> like attached to it. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 That's better because then you don't have to think of it every time you read them. Well, I mean, yeah. yeah, I'm not like sitting down with it anyway, kicking back with the communist no! manifesto, no, but it just like, not. it made me laugh Let's so hard. Yeah. Yeah, but that's, that's like the kind of guy that you get so smitten with because you're like yeah. no one has like tried to speak to my mind in this way before right. and there's something very nice about that especially so as nice. women because we're so often you know only Titties. sexualized mm. yeah right yeah, yeah. sexualize my brain i was very into him yeah but then the last time i ever saw him i was moving to la and i asked to borrow his printer and borrow that, borrow use his printer oh. and i came over and he goes hurry up because i work in the morning and then I used it, and I ne- that was our last time we ever saw each other. But you, did you ever like, break up? We had we had already broken up, I think, but we were kind of like still, still on and off yeah. a little. Oh yeah. well, my, I, it's, it sounds like he happened. was just putting up a boundary because he was hurt, so he was that's why he was acting in that way. Maybe. It seems it's so weird because when I look back at that relationship, I just feel that I was the hurt one, but I bet that's not accurate. It's always how we feel, yeah. and then. Men yeah. have feelings too. It's I annoying know. to admit. I'm, I'm learning crazy. that as I get older, it's that men crazy. are very sensitive sometimes. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, also, if you, you know, if you have like, I, I do have sympathy for the way men were, you know, raised and socialized in the same yeah. way that I do for women. And you think, well, it's not like everything was like done wrong for us and right for them. Right. It's just as far as like they still can a- achieve and have more, but yeah. they also can't, yeah. ex- they can't express at the level that we can. Yeah. He was not expressive at mm-hmm. all. Mm-hmm. He would just like, he, it was very monotone. He had like that sexy, like Southern African yeah, accent, yeah. but like he would not like raise his voice at all. And it was always like this. Like, wow. So calm. Yeah. So yeah. how long did that last? I think it was on and off for like two years, but we kept breaking up. <laughs> I've had a couple relationships like that where you just keep breaking up. Yeah, what yeah. do you, are you like addicted to that? Oh, like there's excite there's excitement there because <laughs> I can feel that. I'm not a breakup get back together person, but I definitely I like Emma. Yeah. You know, 
like um, I'm bored. I'm going to start a fight kind of person. Oh, <laughs> 100%. But they're similar. They're adjacent. They're cousins. Yeah, yeah cousins. they're probably similar. But the breaking up, getting back together is probably more toxic. Yeah, probably you know? for sure. For sure. Yeah, I never like want to. Well, I, it's also like I think it's like how 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 can I act and you can still handle it? That's also a little bit of a test. <laughs> yeah, it's like a test. Yeah, yeah. yeah, a challenge. Have you ever tested a guy? I think I do without realizing it. Yeah, yeah, it's I'm normal. learning a lot about my the way I am. Like, I'm trying to take more responsibility, but I think I do do that a lot. Is, like, is there something that, like, happened or, like, that, that made you want to dig deeper? Um, well, I got out of a relationship maybe, I don't know what, I don't know when, a couple months ago, mm -hmm. and definitely left me feeling pretty, like, hurt and Aww. trying to figure it out yeah mm -hmm. yeah and that, also being like i feel like i repeat the same patterns with people Absolutely. where like i always fall for people emotionally unavailable and i i just don't want to keep doing that yeah yeah it's you know? exhausting so, it's a fucking exhausting well yeah. but you're such a hard worker do you feel a lot of like uh success in like trying to get through to them is that like a fun challenge for you Maybe, yeah. I definitely That's think I respond it. more to a challenge than somebody too. who's too easily accessible. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that's true for all of us. You know, yeah. like the hunt is fun. Oh, my God. Right. So fun. Too fun. And yeah. Yeah. There's certain people that I'm just like, for whatever reason, very drawn to. And then it's like, but the, they're no matter how hard you try, you might just never connect. And sometimes mm. you think like, I don't know, how uh, is it hard for you to be attracted to somebody? Like, is it rare? Yes. So, it's me too. so rare. So when I'm attracted to somebody and drawn yeah. to them, I'm like, and, and they're emotionally unavailable. It doesn't always happen. But when it yeah. does, I'm like, well, if I'm drawn to you, I have to pursue this. I yes, have to. I, that's I have how I feel. Or or I can't get out of it once I'm, I'm connected to yeah. someone. I'm like, well, now I'm stuck. We need this to because, burn in flames yeah. before I move on. Yes, yeah, same. Yeah. And then it takes me a very long time to get over people. Yeah, me yeah. So like yeah. before this last relationship, I had waited like two years to date anyone because yeah. the one before that was so like disappointing, you know? And I was like, that's it. I'm just going to focus on career and I'm not going to date. Yeah. And I did that for two years and then, you know. It's boring. I know. It's but fun I don't to try love. like I don't try to find love. Like I'm not really into like like really trying. Yeah. Maybe it's good. Maybe it's not because it's not romantic or because you don't want to like because it feels like work like to do apps yes. or things like that. Well, it yeah, is work. Same. And that's what I, I think that's what people, you know, often don't understand. Like if you are looking, it's just a decision you have to make. Like for me, I made the decision that like I don't want it bad enough to put that work in. Yeah. It's also I'm a little more laid back about it because I'm not on like a marriage kids timeline. Yeah. Right. You know, so I don't have to fight a biological clock. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, there is the romance part where it's like, yeah, I, I don't want to like see, I feel like I just want to like live the life I was destined to live same and, and you want to let it happen to you yeah 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 I really I have all I guess I'm old-fashioned I just want love to be an accident yeah same I don't want Lots love to be like movies. I desperately need love to feel fulfilled you're not old-fashioned you were a child in the 90s yeah <laughs> the maybe movies, all those movies man they're like they're yeah. all the like like, like oops the I just ran every, into someone yeah, every yeah. <laughs> great movie Elizabeth Ma it's like oh a book he wrote his phone whose yeah. phone number is this I'm gonna call it oh it's my love of my life yeah yeah yeah. What? Do you believe in but soulmates? But I really had that when I was in high school. Oh. I would have love happen like that. Really? It was in high, high school? school? Yes. What like, the fuck? When I, what a my, bad deal because then you that accept your That's what I thought up. twice. Well, my first love that I fell madly in love with was music camp. Alexis, okay. who was this Parisian um, mm. flautist. Ooh. You certainly have a type. Yeah. <laughs> And he would, he swore like a sailor and I thought, and he was bipolar. Nice. He was like a bipolar, like edgy flautist with a <laughs> yes. French accent. Wow. He Ooh, was, I thought he was angst. the sexiest guy. And I, I played cat and mouse with him because mm. I was like, oh, don't come near me. You know, don't come near me. And then it was like, uh, he like kept chasing me around, you know. And then at the end, like I kissed him and it was like my first kiss. Oh, that's good. And wow. Then, uh, he, Bipolar flautist yeah. from Persia? From Persian? Parisian. Parisian. Oh, he was Parisian. from Paris. Yeah, from Paris. Oh, oh okay. He was French. Ooh, la, and he'd go, la. he'd go, I wear pink and I, I play flute. So Americans think I'm gay. And I <laughs> thought that was so hot. <laughs> I don't think you're gay, monsieur. I was like, I don't. But wow. he was so cool. I mean, a French accent on a man or a woman is just so Especially hot. Especially when they so swear sexy. nonstop and they're like, my fucking, you know, flute and my yeah, fucking, my know, fucking just... flute. <laughs> this god awful flute. I found out later flute. he threw his flute out the window. Uh oh. He's in got a temper. burst of rage. 
Were you but like, I wrote mm. him. So he left before I left music camp. Okay. And I cried every night. And I wrote him handwritten letters mm. for months. And he never wrote me back. What? Yeah. Did, you knew they were going to the right place? Yeah. Because Maybe I, it was one of those movie things where his mother was hiding them and not giving them to him. I don't know. Or I was, I was heartbroken. It. And he, I remember when he said goodbye to me, I was crying. And he goes, do not cry, Erica. I am just a page in your book. Wow. Oh my God. Was he 47? Wow. He was 16. Holy Whoa. Crap. Only a crush. I am just a page. Or maybe he was like, I am just a chapter in the your book of life. Either way. Whoa. Insightful yeah. but, and wise, but the wisdom of like decades old. Arrest oh this God. man on the campus. I was, was he even real? Wow. Oh my God. I was madly in love. And then I my, don't blame you. And then my next boyfriend was Russian. Nice. And he was a violinist that I met and I was madly in love with him. You want the music? First day that I saw him, he was so cute. His name was Leo and he was so cute. And I was in orchestra with him and I noticed him before he noticed me. But then I went to a concert where my mom was playing at Symphony Hall and I sat down and he and I locked eyes and he came and sat down next to me for the whole concert. And at the end of the concert, he turned to me and he goes, I think I should meet your mother. Whoa. Whoa! You and were he, wooed as right? a child, and then he came and met Jesus my Christ, mother. These grown men, boys, right? I mean, that's what I'm saying. Is like my Not life American. was like a movie when I was a kid. So wow. now, then I got yes. spoiled. Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. I feel like I had a much easier time with like relationships, but I think it's just like you you have less things on the list that you need. Yeah. So just yeah. like having a good time and like being romance is all. There's no that's all you need. That's all you need. Yeah, not yeah, a lot of things. You don't really need to get me yet. I don't get me. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. every time I met a guy, it was like out of the blue. I wasn't looking for it. It was in some circumstance. It was really romantic. Because yeah. there's more around when you're younger and they're older. They like, got true. married. Then and they're shit. married. Yeah. They're not available. Yeah. They're heartbroken themselves. So they don't, they're jaded. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But a lot, I've had a lot of loves like that where it feels like it's out of the blue and like, oh my God, they just were, it was destiny. I was just hit by it. Yeah, how yeah. many times were you in love? Because you already on the show said, told me like five times. <laughs> yeah, that's well, a lot. That's a lot I more was, than me. Before I was 18, I was in love a lot. And then yeah. since then, it's very rare. <laughs> well, because like on average, like, I, like it's pretty like a low, it's a pretty low number. Like most no people's like average, like f- times they fall in love, like five statistically they consider to be a lot of times to be in love. Yeah. Really? For an adult, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think Do you think that's for men as well as women? I think men Uh, fall in love a lot. Men is like five, and like women, like like sixty or like fifty or sixty percent is like one time is like they consider true love, and like not any other love. I would say we're on on city love timing. I think I've been in love maybe seven times my whole life. That's awesome. Just seven. Yeah, for me, just seven. For me, that's a lot. For me, it's four. I think seven's a little on the high end. Really? Yeah. Wait, let me think. That's good though. Maybe five. Maybe four for me. I think like eight. Eight? I think I've yeah I love eight? way too many people yeah yeah I love a lot like, of people it, like they didn't even, love me back like some even of them. now yeah. though in retrospect looking back on it it's it, you would still define it as love well, d- it, how do you define it in retrospect? In the moment, if you say it's love, isn't uh, it love? I would, no? I push back on that for this show. Sometimes it borderlines I, with obsession yeah, or lust. I, story I like. think sometimes you're, you're clouded and then when you actually fall in love, you realize that sometimes you said I love you and you didn't actually mean it. Like they're in there, yeah. I definitely said I love you one time and it was um, ju- it was a manipulation tactic to a person who's worse than me, so it's fine. Yeah. Um, but if I had done that to a nice person, it would have been very cruel. Right. I yeah. think maybe six. I could say six yeah. times that I've been in love. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm still going to say eight. Um, <laughs> You're like, mine's not I, going da- yeah. down. Yeah. That's a lot. Well, yeah. that's great. That's yeah. a rich life, you know? Yeah, I mean, it wasn't always reciprocated in the way that I wanted it to. Yeah, but. well, that's my problem, too. Well, the emotional unavailability, I, I know that very yeah. well. Um, yeah. And when it's a pattern, usually, like, I, I didn't understand. I think I, I put together maybe about five years ago that something was up with my mom and that I didn't have like a normal childhood. Yeah. And then, and then I cracked open the egg and then I just wept for a couple years. Oh yeah. But that made me realize, Oh, this is why I go for the guys that I go yeah. for. Um, do, you can was usually there any track link with that it back for you? Probably. Yeah. 
But I, I think maybe my parent, my parents are a little bit errat, were maybe a little bit erratic. It was up and down, uh, or a little uh, unpredictable. Yeah, mm-hmm. oh, know? that unpredictability is the unpredictability. Well, that you never know means the breakup get back together. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah, the yeah. unpredictable feels that wouldn't that would register as something that you're like, oh, this isn't healthy or this isn't appropriate. That would also, register my, as something. That my makes dad sense. was kind. My dad had sort of depression issues and also was disabled. Okay, and so I think in some ways, like I, somebody told me recently that if you have a disabled parent it can be read as a fear of abandonment like you read it as abandonment if you have a disabled parent so then you have oh. abandonment trauma because they can't do the same things other parents can do yeah or, oh, or that you're you're you are more aware of their looming death oh oh so you're like because you physically see uh something different with yeah them, you see well health. you know there's a disability something wrong with them yeah um he had MS. Oh, okay, uh-huh. so he's in a wheelchair. Yeah. Was he quad or paraplegic? Like, well, he wasn't any of those until way later in life. Uh-huh. He could actually walk around fine with crutches for quite a while, and then he was in a wheelchair. And then as I got older, he then couldn't move. But yeah. as a kid, he could still kind of walk around. Yeah, yeah. But he yeah. couldn't like do anything like a dad. You know, typical dads yeah, can like you know lift their kid up or do things like that. You know, okay. and he couldn't do any of that. So. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's interesting. Abandonment. The perceived as abandonment because a kid. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, kids gonna make these connections without even understanding that they're making these right. connections. Right. Yeah, and also like a caretaking thing because you feel like I felt pressure to try to make him feel better. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And so there's a caretaking thing of like, oh, if I find a guy who might be like either depressed or damaged or something wrong, I could like I'm make really things good at being a better. Part of that. Yeah, yeah, it could be make mm. things better. And it feels good to make yeah. things better for your parent because you don't yet realize that that's inappropriate. Right. And then you do it as an adult with men, and you're like, this feels even better. Yeah, we can fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I love being an adult. <laughs> and then you go, that's not how you do that. Yeah. Oops. But I don't know. I, I, it's hard to know if things come from your childhood or if you're just drawn to certain people. And if you yeah. can, if you can change your patterns, like what, what that takes, I think it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of work. Well, it takes you're a attracted desire. to. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I think heartache is a really good motivator in that. True. It is such a good motivator. You would It'll think. <laughs> I think so. I, 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 that's why I think I often, don't like and heartache. I, and I go, I don't know. But yeah, then you meet another person and you're like, it's all better. And yeah. then you're like, wait, they're I don't the even same, care anymore about that guy. You're, same person. Yeah, because yeah. there is something about like, oh, it's like mm, the heartache can also be healed faster by someone who reminds you of the other person, uh, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I mean, people have a type. I mean, even that's how you decipher like, a, you know, one of the key factors in deciphering a rebound relationship from a not rebound relationship is how similar is that next person to the previous person? Because people oh, really, really do have a type. So technically it should be a similar person time and time again. Again, if it's a drastically different person, it's probably a rebound. And rebounds obviously can turn into real relationships. Yeah. It happens. But, um, you know, that's how it starts. Right. How do you know, like, in what stage do you know that the person is emotionally unavailable? Probably the second I'm attracted to <laughs> <laughs> that was such an honest answer. Yeah. yeah, I had a joke I wrote once where I was like, "One red flag about a guy is if I am into if I like him. him. Yeah, if I'm yeah, into yeah. him, that's a big red flag." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> how do you? How pre- historically have you handled emotional unavailability? Because there is, I've been listening to a lot mm. of um, Esther Perel. She's a relationship uh, counselor, and she oh. just really she has this podcast called "Where Should We Begin." And it, when I was single and I listened to that, I'm like, thank God I'm not in a relationship. This shit fucking oh. sounds like it sucks. Just those, because I've been in a long-term one and those fights that you're like, well, this is going nowhere. That's the podcast. And she manages to wade through the bullshit lies that these people are telling each other and to like get to the heart of the matter. Yeah. Uh, but like, with, and so I've heard her talk about emotional unavailability and how to express that to your partner. But I'm like, these people have been together for you know, a decade and they have kids. So there's like all these things at stake where it's like, yeah, making this relationship work is like, is makes sense. Well, but like, yeah, when you're the, just attracted to somebody and I you're kind of chasing. I think the hard thing is if you feel like I felt in my last relationship that I kept expressing myself. Okay. You know, which a, was healthy. A, yeah, yeah. But then it wasn't met with, you know, like I Change. said, I, I would need more communication. And then he's like, I need more space. <laughs> and so it's like, well, that's, you know, yeah. I just expressed myself and I felt vulnerable because I expressed myself. And yeah. it was like, he didn't talk to me for two days. 
Oh. So then I felt yeah. like, oh, well, that's the signal that's... that you don't care that w- of what I just said yeah. I needed. Yeah. And know? so what did that, did that motivate you to get out of the relationship? Or yeah. Like then I it? ended it a couple days after that. Oh, that's great. That's good. Yeah. Progress. Yeah, I guess. Because I feel like older because iterations how... of yourself would have been like, well, wait, hold on. You know, you try kind of try. Well, harder. because so many times I feel like people will say the words you want to hear. But then the yeah. action, if the action mm. is not the action right you then, then it doesn't matter what words they are say yeah. yeah you could just say well we want to i want to talk to you more but it's just i need space right you know and then it's like okay but those are two opposing views and your action is you don't want to talk to me more yeah and so i was saying one. i want to talk more yeah so then that conversation is saying i don't care that that's what you want yeah yeah you're or right or i'm not willing your to needs make are the not change something i'm gonna meet or, yeah yeah like i can't compromise in that way yeah yeah and it sucks to break up with somebody when it's like you can't be enough for me it's well it sucks like you, when you, you can't feel that you've expressed yourself and it's and it's met with like well too bad mm-hmm. <laughs> Because you don't want to break up with them, but then you're like, well, but if Why? I now don't I break have up to. with them, yeah, if I don't break up with them, then I'm saying this is all I'm worth. Yeah. And yeah. I'm never going to get better and I'm just going to keep accepting this. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and yeah. over, expecting a different result. But it is so you're like, sad okay. because if you're still into someone, breaking up with them is like just not fun. Yeah. You're like, I don't want to do this, but you're kind of making me do it. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fine. Then you're like, did I break up with him or did he break up with me? I feel like sometimes people push somebody else to break yeah, up with that's them because what it they felt don't want to like. fucking do it. That's kind of what it felt I like. I fucking hate that and shit. And I don't like that. Yeah, so. I don't either. It's just like, use your fu- Say what you want. Yeah. Motherfucker. Like, I don't know. And also, if you don't know what you want, that's knowing what you want. You know? Yeah. Right? yeah. No was, action is an action. He was kind of saying he didn't. He was kind of saying, I don't know what I want to me. Yeah. And I was like, well, that's saying you know what you want, which yeah. is not this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, Okay. <laughs> yeah. See, see, I guess. Because if this is so, what you wanted, you'd be like, uh, you'd recognize it and be like, yeah, I like this. Yeah. Yeah. Or you dinner. would say, well, how can we make this work? Right. right. You, when would, you would give a shit. Yeah. I mean, I think he did. I just don't know that he could express it or yeah. make it Maybe. work. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe I'm not. always torn. Maybe it's almost didn't. like a, a myth to me. I'm like, I does a guy. Tell that kind of guy truly not give a shit or does he not know how to give a shit? It just always mm. feels weird to me like with that people are in relationships like um, so passively. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's true. Yeah. It's kind of like active participant. Do you want to just wait for it to crumble or do you want like because it, you know, kinda... you can just not be in a relationship. Right. True. That's, a, that's such an option. Men be mad lonely, though. Yeah. Yeah. I They're think like, they all right, I'll lonely. do this. Yeah. I think men have more of a feeling like they will be someone else, but it's not any they're still stuck with who they are yeah. they're still going to be the same person in the that's next a good point thing, yeah you know yeah that's true well we were kind of just talking about that you know like I, I think like men are searching for women to give them a feeling and like women are searching a little bit more for a specific person yeah yeah, yeah maybe i don't know sometimes i don't know what i'm I was gonna say for what are you either. searching for well or what would you like um, in an ideally in a mate I mean, if it's someone I'm really into, I would like it to be to feel like a partnership, you know, yeah. like equal partnership. Um, Have you ever had a relationship that felt that way? That one I told you about with my with, my with the, the, film, the filmmaker. Yeah, yeah. Where, where, where we were friends and we did fun things together and we yeah. communicated really well and yeah. we cared about each other a lot and we felt it felt like equals. It didn't yeah. feel like one person was more into the relationship. It felt like we were equally really into the relationship. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's nice. Um, but I'm like, I mean, I'm I'm pretty independent. Like, I don't think I'd want a relationship that felt like compl- like clingy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so I didn't like in this last relationship. I felt like I was starting to feel like a neediness or a clinginess, and I was like, this isn't even. I'm not like that. You were being needy and clingy. I felt that I was huh. being like that, but only because I was getting so little in return. Mm. Like, as so far that's as yeah. So you probably weren't. Yeah, you probably so weren't. But you're like, what the fuck is this? I mean, yeah, a lot I don't want to feel that way. Yeah, no, that's not good. Well, because that make that gives you anxiety all the time too. Yeah, because then you're waiting yeah. and you're like, am I just not going to hear from him? Right, or right, right, like, right. Is this a relationship? Even though it's we're calling it a relationship, is it a relationship if it's not looking like a relationship? Right. How long yeah. did you stay f- that one? A couple months. Oh, a it couple was pretty months. short, but okay. I've known him a long time, so it was the okay. friendship was kind of hard to lose because I just right. don't think I could oh. be friends after yeah. that. Yeah. You know, so I don't, I'm not good at that if I really still have feelings for someone. Yeah. So maybe when the feelings go away, but right now I'm like, "Mm, 
Yeah, you said it takes you a long time to get over breakups. Me, me too. And I, yeah. I, and it's and it's hard. And I've really done a lot of work in maintenance just because it's so, I mean, physically and emotionally um, yeah. painful and distracting. Yeah, and, I hate the distraction yeah. part of it. Yeah, and you think Jesus, like I've it penetrates you know, your every second of your life. I think that's a real sign when it's not healthy, is if it's distracting you from focusing on your life and yourself. Well, heartache is always like that, right? Yeah, I guess. But the, like a love relationship shouldn't be like that. I guess. Right. But yeah, no, I don't like think of like boyfriends I'm dating all the time. But heartache. No. Yeah, no, mm-hmm. that's weird. But like heartache, you just got to give your, because I've heard you say this, like I'll give myself this amount of time to like grieve the relationship. Oh, that's what my, my dad it. always said that with any disappointment, he was always like, you get three days to feel yeah. really bad. Or, no, he said 24 hours. He okay. Like, I was like, three days is a good amount of time. 24 hours. And I tried to renegotiate it when he was dying because I was like, I think I'm going to need more than 24 <laughs> hours to get yeah. out of this one. Yeah. Yeah. I that's think that's fair. Line. And he goes, nope. Oh, 24 hours. Yeah. Try 24 years. Like, yeah. 24 have years. Have you, yeah. um, how, when, how old were you when you lost your dad? Oh, it was two years ago. Oh, two years. So, so yeah. fresh. It's yeah. so recent. I'm so sorry Pretty for your new. loss. Oh, thanks. Um, how was that process? Like how, how. Oh, it's so Because MS is mm. fatal. Well, it's just gradual. Yeah. So it's, it's. So you saw the. Yeah. I guess the other thing too, you said a parent with a disability, but I, I imagine there's another layer when that disability gets progressively worse in front of your eyes. Yeah. It's just like, I had a friend who said something where she was like, well, it was a long time coming or something. And I was like, whoa, yeah, asshole. I know, I just, <laughs> people say the wildest what shit. The my dad, my dad died she, a year what? ago. She just yeah. didn't know what to say. Right. I didn't yeah. hold it against her, but I also was kind of like, that's not the problem. <laughs> yeah. is The problem right, is that sport. <laughs> with, when someone has a disability, it's yeah. actually harder because you see him go to the hospital and then come home, go to the yeah. hospital, come oh, home forever. Regular occurrence. So, so that's the pattern. The pattern is right. he goes to the hospital and dies every time. Right, right. You know, right. he goes to the hospital, he comes home, he's better. Yeah. He might be a little bit worse. That's an but, interesting observation. Yeah. 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 So this time it was like he, you know, when he's actually dying, you're like, well, maybe not. Yeah. You know, but he, he was. Damn. So. Did he, um, was he cognizant the last, the last moment? Very. And wow. he had a very peaceful death. He did wow. hospice at home and it was, Oh, that's nice. It was, we were all there with him and I was there like every day with him mm. and it was a really special time and I'm very grateful that I that's got to good. be there for it. Yeah. And, and he was cognizant. So you were able to have conversations. Yeah, he was fine. I mean, he, wow. he, he, he kind of came in and out a couple times towards yeah. the end. But we had a couple, you know, like I had to do yeah, some moments. Zoom shows or some other meetings and stuff. And he's like, it's fun living with a Hollywood star. <laughs> <laughs> Said things like that. <laughs> That's so sweet. Yeah, he was really funny. How was his d- view towards death? He wasn't really scared of it, but he felt a little in denial sometimes at moments. Uh. Like he'd be like, I'm going to read this book or I'm going to do that. You know, mm. like he had plans. Yeah. Um, I think that also helps you, though, like I, you, there's something to that that helps you even live those last few days, you know, yeah, because I think I, there is really something to like losing the will to live. Right. But he want he was also really at peace because his quality of life had gone mm-hmm. down so significantly. I mean, he couldn't move anything. He could only move his pinky. Mm. Oh, fuck. Um, Not even the neck. Or yeah, the, oh. he couldn't. Well, he couldn't feed himself. He couldn't use his right. hands and he couldn't walk and. His life was just really tough, you know, really, really tough. And so he was, he kind of was like, I just don't want to do this anymore. Yeah. Yeah. So it was probably harder on my mom than my dad. Oh yeah. I bet. I bet. Cause your mom's been. Then at one point he goes, he goes, everyone thinks I'm dying. Cause it was such a weird, Ah, it was such a weird thing. All these people would visit and they'd be like, get real close to him and be like, how are you doing Dean? You know, staring at him. And he's like, everyone thinks I'm dying. And I didn't know what to say to that. Cause I didn't know. Oh, like, he like as if he, if didn't, he know? didn't. Yeah, as if he didn't know. And oh, so I just I said, see. I just said, what gives you that impression? <laughs> and then he laughed and he goes, "That was good, buddy." Oh, so that was funny. funny. <laughs> um, I'm really into the woo woo stuff and like talking oh, yeah. to people who have passed away. Have you oh, heard, yeah. like? And so, there's this book called Signs that I'm obsessed with by an author who talks about like developing secret communication with your loved ones who have passed away. Oh, I love Did that. Did he send any you any signs? Well, or, like, he have sent, you- every time I hear a Queen song. I feel like him, he's communicating through that. And one time when I visited my mom, right Anthony after Anthony DeVito died, just had a queen shirt on. Oh, really? Yeah, he was sitting in this chair right See? before you. Yeah. Every time um, I hear a queen song, I feel like it's my dad. But this was really weird. We Are the Champions was sort of his song. Because when he got hired at like Ernst & Young, which is a big CPA firm, he like yeah. played that. Yeah. And he loved that song. <laughs> That's we Are so the cute. Champions. Yeah. Um, And so when, so... So when I was visiting my mom right after he died, I drove her car a couple times. 
three times. It oh, played. yes, wow. that's your dad. That's one hundred percent. Three times. That's one hundred percent your dad. I was like, every time every, I get in the car, yeah, yeah. it's yeah. playing this that's, song. So the sign, the book signs of the light between us are both of her books. Uh, it's they're crazy. filled with stories like that. They really are filled with stories. And she says, like, you know, ask for something really specific that you don't think you'll ever get, like a like an elephant with purple and black zebra stripes on it. And then she'll talk talk about this story about this woman, like they found themselves at a diner above a painting. They just sat in this booth, and then there was there it was. I also saw like, a deer in Griffith Park, where there mm. are not deer. Yeah, that's definitely too many people. And mm. deer operate on the electromagnetic field, so they're easier to manipulate. I know, like the the actual like science of passing away is very interesting to have, me. Because have you it's energy? Have you watched? Um, um, uh, surviving death. Surviving death. Yeah, I love that. So Laurel and Jackson was featured on that. It's the meeting with long blonde okay. hair. Yes, I'm, t- I'm doing a weekend retreat with her at the end of the month. What? I'm obsessed with this topic Do because you ha- did you lose anyone you love? No, I'm never, no? not a one. I mean, I have grandparents, but it was very like. I was a kid and it, it wasn't like one just, I was really attached to, but I was so young that I didn't, I wasn't so you're just sad. curious about that. Just death. curious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just and curious. You, you lost your dad? I lost like everyone I love Yeah, she's four had years. De- she's experienced death. I was dating forever. grandfather, dad, childhood best friend. The person you were dating died? Yeah, I mean, it was very early, but it was like very, actually very traumatic. Like Probably right one before, of the worst ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh Not as bad as dad, what obviously. what happened? Yeah, w- with the, the, he had a heart attack. And Literally like, the last thing I said to this guy yeah. was don't die. Yeah. Because I knew him too. And I was like, Carl, don't was, die. Oh, my God. Was he a comedian? He was a chef. chef. Oh, my God. Yeah. Cocaine and hot dogs. R.I.P. Carl. Oh, my God. Well, you, that's buddy. the way you want to go out. Oh. <laughs> 100%. That is totally, he had fun. Yeah. That's that man had fun. Not a bad death. Yeah. But that is tough for you. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's interesting because I'm like, oh, yeah, like Christine is very fascinated by it. And I'm like, I'm less so just because I know you've experienced it. it. Well, it's also, it's, it's also just like it's not I, I I hate to break it. It's just not as comforting. The things that she's talking about. Yeah, well, they don't comfort They're you. They're just yeah. not that comforting. Yeah. So, it, it's so it's so they just so pale so wildly in comparison to the actual person existing. You're like, oh, OK, a sign. I didn't cool. find it comforting at first, but gradually I found it more and more comforting. Yeah, yeah. it's like fine. It's like nice. And, you know, it's just I think it's just like it's it's just not anything like the person you know yeah right. so you think you're gonna be that's happy why i like, like have like a full fucking conversation with the person right, right, right. and it's like you're not. i had a friend tell me something which i th- like which really comforted me about how what the about the memory of the person is mm-hmm. what lingers you know mm-hmm. i mean that's why i like the jewish tradition of saying may their memory be a blessing, blessing yeah. i love that phrase mm, yeah because yeah, me because too. your mem the memory is not something that goes away yeah and so my dad would repeat phrases all the time mm-hmm. and so i i know what he would say about certain things yeah i already know yeah so i so i can have conversations because it's from my memory right you know? right and right. that i find comforting yeah it is a I, constant like struggle to keep that alive because i do I mean, I, it's so hard. Like I took, my dad was also in hospice and I took um, oh. tons of notes, like Smart. extensive oh, notes. I wish I did that. It was so, it was so hard. I, I, I wish I took more video. What did he die from again? But uh, he, well, he had a double cardiac arrest oh. um, and then, but he had brain damage. So it was, I, I was, he was not cognizant oh, in the same no. way. So yeah. it was basically like I was visiting you know, a person who had the essence of my dad. Yeah, that's um, hard. But like, you know, it was as a comedian, I found it to be very comforting because his sense of humor was the most intact part of his personality yes. throughout, which I found to be fascinating. Yes. And like I a real like the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah my yeah. dad would do like when he stopped talking, he would do things with his eyebrows. Ah. Mm. Funny, <laughs> you know, raise the eyebrows. That's and so I'm like, funny. it's still my dad. Yeah. He's still there. Right. You know? Because your, our senses of humor, I, you know, are some of the most most unique parts about us and so it's nice that it's not like it didn't become a generic sense of humor it was still right. a signature sense of humor yeah i found that right. really cool i think i'm so obsessed with death because neither of my parents ever understood me and they never will and they're not nice to me so i feel like after they die they're gonna be nice to me well a lot of people honestly I really, I no, really but a lot of people that. say they've, they're more connected to their parents yeah. once they pass away yeah and laura wrote about that like two stories she wrote about in the book and i'm like oh that's how i get it <laughs> relationship with my parents yeah cool. no it's true though yeah yeah well but also it could also crazy that th- that this exists a communication line exists that's wild to me that's so magical yeah 
They could also reincarnate as another person in your life later on. Oh, I don't know if I want that. Yeah, but they, they're they not good in human form. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, like, uh, does, that, animal, does that mean that animal. every lifetime you're not good? I don't think that's no. true. I think most pe- I, I think most people will probably like I would think that people who have only existed a couple of times are the worst people. And then as you exist mm, more and more times, sure. yeah. you become a better person yeah. because you learn the lessons yeah, yeah, of, yeah. The, of the world. I think the my human grandfather realm. turned yeah. into a duck. <laughs> Oh, pretty sure he's a duck. That's fun. Yeah. <laughs> what makes you think I that? I don't know. I just he had a duck essence about him. That's so funny. And, <laughs> yeah, I've met people before that I'm like, you're like a bird. You're yeah. a, you he are was, a he bird. He was a very what? peaceful man. He was like such a quintessential grandpa. Aww. You know, he had like rosy cheeks. He was Aww. Swedish. And he just liked the simple things in life. You know, yeah. he liked nature. He loved books. He loved music. And I just see him as like a duck now floating around. Oh, you know? that's so like, cute. Yeah. That's so sweet. I think people have an essence that's beyond like a human form. For sure. A hundred percent. Even like the way they walk, like my, my, yeah. uh, ever, the men in my family have a very particular like stance and like a, their way they, the way they hold themselves. I'm like, that's, yeah. so, I would recognize that from a mile yes, away. Yes. In any sort of being yeah. in a animal or someone else. Yeah. Are you guys in relationships now, by the way? Are you dating? I'm I just ended one. You are? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're it's been a while since now? I've been in a relationship. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Congrats. It's fun. <laughs> and congrats. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't congrats. know if it's congrats. congrats. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got a lot of I got a lot of love to give. So I guess yeah. Just gotta, yeah. That's uh, good. It's fun. Um, thank you so much for doing the show. Oh, this really is fast. Sure yeah. Um, what would you like to promote and plug? Uh, when does this come out? It's gonna come out in a couple, a couple weeks. weeks. Like maybe three weeks to a month. Okay. Um, I'm doing some shows in November at the West Bend Theater. Okay. And that's in Wisconsin. Nice. Okay. And it's a very good theater. And I had a great time before. And I'm going with two friends who are in bands. Nice. So it's going to be like a variety show. Katie Tupin cool. and a- Ava um, of the Ava and the Vagabond Tales. Oh, I love that. And um, so they're coming with me. And yeah, so you'll do stand up, and then they're going to play music. Yeah, we're going to do like so a variety. Fun. That's show. really fun. That's yeah. so that sounds cool. like a great time. Yeah, they're great, like friends too. That's great. So Where can people fun. find tickets? Um, West Bend. Yeah, yeah. Uh, social media. You can follow me on er- Erica Rhodes on Instagram, Twitter. I Perfect. guess I'm on TikTok, even though I never go on there. Yeah, I'm not a TikTok fan, but I'm on there. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. Thank you so much, Erica. Thank you, guys. Great. Thank you. This has been Guys We Fucked, the anti-slut shaming podcast. We'll talk to you next Friday. All right. Yeah, that's fine. But like, fix it.